If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who live in or around the woods, forests, hikers, campers, etc., what was your scary encounter with something otherworldly in the woods? Creatures, strange things, trails, unknown beings, etc. For around half a year to a year now, I've been observing these creatures in the woods around my friend's house. I go over there frequently, and we go to said woods together to observe them. I am fairly positive that these entities are flesh gates. They are almost pure white, very skinny, and crawl around. They are almost identical to the rate creepypasta, except for slightly distorted proportions. We see them often pacing near the edge of the forest at late times in the night. There are usually two of them, although they've been out there alone before. They seem to be getting cockier and nearing us instead of observing from a distance like they used to. We've seen other equally disturbing creatures around the area. I was at my parents' trailer in the far north woods of Wisconsin. Drinks were had, and my mom and girlfriend had gone to bed. My dad and I were sitting on opposite ends of the fire, and he was telling me some stories. Behind his left shoulder, my right side, and over our log pile, I could see, well, a glimmery entity walking around our neighbor's campsite. My dad kept talking, and I feigned interest as I watched this thing meander around. It didn't seem like it had anything it was specifically doing, but I could clearly see it moseying around their site and seemingly facing their trailer the whole time. Eventually I lost my line of sight, and it seemingly disappeared into the woods. I don't know what I saw or how to explain it, and I am a bit more cautious every time I stay there now. This happened this weekend on the edge of the Jefferson National Forest in Virginia, where my wife has a cabin and we frequently go. She had a friend from college visit who is a park ranger and wanted to go up to the mountain and look for morel mushrooms. We get way up, maybe a mile on a logging trail, very steep, and like a dumbass, I'm wearing flip-flops, and we hit a division on the trail. One is steeper than the other, so we agree I'll take the less steep, and we'll meet at the top, maybe 150 yards. They go on their way, I go mine. It takes maybe two minutes to get to the top, they aren't there, so I wait a couple of minutes and call out for them. Nothing. I have a very loud, booming voice. Nothing. At the base of the mountain, there are neighbors that keep coonhounds, and I can hear them, so I know sound is carrying. I was there for five minutes, so I headed back. I get to where the trails meet, and my wife and her friend are there freaking out that I had been gone for over 30 minutes and that they had been yelling for me, never heard me, and were worried sick. I was gone for seven to eight minutes. What the duck? Once I was out in these woods behind my old apartments, and the owner of the apartments would always tell us not to go there because you'd see monsters. You know how little kids are curious and mysterious. Two of my old friends went inside the forest or woods and hung out in this tall tree that looked like someone had built an old, unstable tree house out of branches and twigs. After many times going into the forest, one time from an old, unstable tree house out of branches and twigs. After many times going into the forest, one time from a distance, we saw the best way I could describe a little skinny person with no clothes on, pointy ears, and very round eyes. We only saw it for a few seconds till it ran off into the wilderness, and it ran and jumped fast. So I knew it wasn't some kind of kid or whatever, he was about two to three feet tall, really skinny, and hairy. This would have been in 2008. I went camping with two of my friends in Temagami, northern Ontario. We portaged into the back lakes, and it took about two days to get to where we were. We wanted good fishing, so we made the trek. The second night there, I'm sleeping by the fire. Full disclosure, we had been drinking all day. They woke me up because they could hear something just behind the tree line, near a little creek. When I finally got focused, I could hear it, too. Then a couple rocks got thrown our way. Let me reiterate. We were in a deep backcountry forest. There was no one around, and this would have been around 11 at night. We didn't smell anything, and we didn't feel anything threatening or anything like that. Just a couple rocks are getting tossed out of the way. There's no way to know what it really was, but I'm certain it wasn't a human. The area where the sounds came from was far away from any path, the only paths that could have been over there would have been deer trails. There are no hiking trails anywhere near there. Last summer, my boyfriend and I were camping in the Washita Forest, off the Winona Scenic Route. We drove through a gorgeous spillway to a creek site where we had set up our camp and were laying in the hammock for the night. Next thing I know, our dog is growling this deep growl I'd never heard her make, so it caught my attention. I look in the direction she's growling in, and I see this weird humanoid? Figure just casually walking in the woods about 10 to 20 feet away from us. It's a light gray, maybe white color, 7-ish feet tall, very skinny, and has an abnormally large head. Our dog barks and catches its attention, 
it stops for a good 20 seconds, looks at us, then carries on its way. Needless to say, we immediately packed everything up and left. We hadn't taken anything recreational that night, though I sort of wish we had now. I truly don't know what I saw, but I'm so curious if we were the only ones to see anything like that out there. I walk around the farmland that I live on for exercise. My sleep schedule was messed up for a while, and I slept during the day, so I decided to walk at night. Nothing around but the coyotes and some weirdos. So I get about 40% of the way through the mile walk when I see something heading towards the crossroads in front of me. It's just a shadow under the moonlight, which is weird considering it was a full moon. From my 6 foot 2 perspective, it was taller than the almond orchard tree line, so it was at least 9 feet tall. At this point, I'm filled with an absolutely primal fear, and despite actually carrying a weapon at the time, I turn my headlamp off and run nearly half a mile back to my house, feeling like I was being chased the whole way there. Once I get back to the lights of my house, I instantly feel safer. I stand around watching the darkness for a while, but there's nothing, so I go back in and relay the story to my family. The next night, I go back out again, and I see the biggest, most unnatural print ever on the same road I was running. This is not a bear. It's not a mountain lion. None of those even make sense for my area. Beyond that, my boot size is 11 wide. Coyote prints are usually 2.5 inches wide at most. This print is nearly 5 inches wide. I've been told about Dogman by 5 different people. On a cold October night, around midnight, a buddy of mine and I went down the county road. At Sunk Hayes National Wildlife Refuge to listen for owls. We walked pretty far into the woods that night and spent quite a while listening and staring up straight into the hemlocks. At one moment, the sky looked so filled with stars that it almost seemed as though I couldn't see a hint of darkness. We had been there for about an hour and a half, and when my buddy went over to take a look at the trees, something in the sky grabbed my eye. There were two lengths of shooting stars and the occasional satellite that zoomed by my gaze, and even the bright flutters of lifted F-250s and rams speeding by, sometimes reversing to inspect our headlamps, which was scary in and of itself. But what I saw will stick with me forever. Over the tree line, I watched as a bright orange orb transited slowly across my horizon, then stopped near dead above me. Now I wasn't on any illicit substances that night, but if I was, I know that I'd be scared to my wit's end. The orb hovered directly above for nearly 15 seconds, as if it were scanning our activity. It then continued in the same direction until it was out of view. My first logical thought was that perhaps it was a paper lantern or even some sort of drone. But it was moving far too quickly and was much larger than a paper lantern. When my friend came back over, the object was gone, and I was left speechless. In an effort to not sound like a madman, I said nothing to him. Immediately after the event, within less than a minute, we heard multiple wet owls, one of which I witnessed the silhouette of a fly 10 feet above my head, that was quite jarring, a hungry bard, and a pack of very loud coyotes. I wanted out of that place. I was doing the Moose River boat trip with some buddies up in Jackman, and the last night of the trip, we were camped out somewhere on the north end of a ten pond. We got there quite early that day, so we had the whole day to explore the area around this semi-backcountry campsite. There was a path past the latrine leading up to what I'm assuming is an old logging road, and along the path were the remnants of an old cabin, which was quite cool. What was not cool was the box about the same size as a closed-in latrine, sided with only chicken wire, top to bottom on all four sides, with no bench, and a door whose hinges had long rusted away. We couldn't figure out what the heck it was but kept following along the path to the logging road. There were berries everywhere, it was a really nice treat to have on the last day of a semi-strenuous trip, but the bears thought so too, near scat was everywhere. I always read stories or watched videos of people being scared of bears but laughing them off, but in that moment, I was now scared of bears. We decided that the bear bags would be left at another campsite that was not being used and was well downwind of our campsite. We never did see a bear, but that night I was the last person awake, taking in the beautiful sky, when an owl started hooting like crazy, way more than what I normally hear when owls are around. I didn't think much of it until I turned around, and the whole sky was a deep orange, like there was a massive spotlight shining directly on me, but no light was being cast besides the spot itself. This was about 100 times bigger than any super moon I had experienced, and it freaked me the heck out. I could only look at it for a few moments before I felt like it didn't want me to see it, and I had to look away while my heart was pounding its way up my throat. After that, I walked backwards to my tent facing the lake the entire time and asked my friends if they had seen anything strange that night, and no one had, they had all fallen asleep way earlier than I had. I used to love camping and hunting. Not anymore. I used to camp at a private lake that backs up to a hollow. 
When camping with friends, I always request to stay on the opposite side of an open field. The wooded side always gave me the creeps, like something was always watching, because I thought I heard something one night coming up from the hollow. I couldn't sleep that night because of the sounds. Anyway, three or so hours later, I decided to go deer hunting above that same hollow in the afternoon. As the day progressed, I kept hearing something walking around below the ridge line. I thought at first it was another hunter, but then it stopped. It took on a more concerning problem. The sound of the walking became planned as if avoiding detection. If you grew up on a farm, you know the difference between a four-legged walk and a two-legged walk. They sound different. I could barely hear as it got closer and finally stopped behind a large beach. The sun had set, and being terrified, I climbed down from my tree and started to walk out. I missed counting the sunset out, and it became very dark as I walked. I would stop only to hear something coming up from behind. It would stop when I stopped. This continues as I proceed to the clearing, where there is more light. Seeing the clearing and looking back, my eyes could not adjust to the darkness. I had a gun, but I could see to shoot. I assumed this couldn't be a person. I could have shot the person out of fear. I could hear the cracking of something coming closer, and now it wasn't stopping. My hair was on full alert, and I prayed my legs would not let me down. I ran as fast as I could to the clearing. Thank God there was a path to the clearing. I didn't look back, but this thing was coming up fast, and it wasn't as careful with its steps and the noise it was creating. I shot out into the clear and didn't stop until I was halfway across the field, out of breath. Only then did I look back. Whatever it was didn't follow me into the clearing and the light. I've never hunted again or gone into the woods after dark. It terrified me. I think about that day and relive every moment. Whatever that was, it was big coming through that hollow. It saw me in my tree stand and stopped. It slowly got close to planning, and it waited. It was intelligent. That's my story, I've only told a few. Those I've told ask me laughingly, was it a Bigfoot? My reply is that I don't know what it was, and I will never know because I'm never going to put myself in that situation again. That was my experience. So as a kid, me and my dad would walk in cool locations in the forest with our family. The area we frequented a lot was nicknamed the Blue Lagoon. The area was immensely dense, and people used to camp their way back in the 1970s. Long story short, we were walking in this forest. My family was in front, and I stayed back a little bit because I was looking into a small pond because it had a weird color. As I turned around in the distance in the forest, I saw something black and human-shaped running through the forest. Note that the forest entrance only had one road to access, and we parked at the end of it. No cars were around. I quickly panicked and ran towards my parents, telling them everyone was spooked. We got back in the car and went home. This actually happened to me. The forest was cut down a couple of years later. After watching a couple 411 cases, it made me remember that event. There is a local lake near my house that is quite popular in the summer. It has high rocks, and people leap off of them, there are great places to hike around it, and there is a beach that lots of people go to. This story begins in the summer of 1972. Two boys were swimming in the lake late in the evening when they noticed a creature surfacing in the water. The report says that the kids said it looked almost like the creature from the Black Lagoon. It had scaly skin, sharp claws, and spikes on its head. Obviously, the kids ran away in fear. Another recent story is that in August 2006, a man was fishing in the lake, and when he finished with his catch, he heard rustling in the bushes. He didn't want to see what it was, so he leapt in his car. Suddenly, he heard a thunk and noticed a humanoid figure on his roof. He sped off, causing the creature to fall off. When he got home, he saw scratches and fish scales on the roof. Personally, Whenever I go there, I get an eerie feeling that someone is watching me. I don't know why, but it's quite scary. About seven years ago, I went lightweight camping with a friend in a national forest that we are very familiar with. It was night, camp was set, and we were at camp around the fire. Unexpectedly, it started raining, like in Vietnam. Which was very odd as the whole weekend there was no rain forecast at all. Anyway, we decided to pack up and head back to the truck, which was roughly an hour or so of hiking. The rain started getting worse, and fog started to settle. That was alarming to me because we were on a ridge, and fog usually settles in the valleys, at least in my experience. So my friend and I are pretty creeped out by it. Now I know that on the trail there is a very mild split where you can go back to the parking area or do a separate trail that goes a few miles to an equestrian trail. I've been on both several times. Well, we mixed up the inclement weather and took the latter. We hiked for 30 minutes or so, and the rain stopped. It didn't slow or drizzle, it just stopped. Hell, 
Even the trail looked like there was hardly any rain on it. It was still very foggy. Both of us knew we weren't in the right spot and that something wasn't right. It was hair on the back of your neck standing up, kind of ducked up. We came down a hill and out of the thick fog, somehow, and before us was a dirt road. It had trees lining it, and it went on for as far as our flashlights reached. The temperature had dropped by 20 degrees. It was ducking insane, and everything about this area, which I knew did not exist, filled me and my buddy full of dread. I can't even explain how absurd and unnatural this place is. The only feeling I can specifically nail down for me is that I do not belong here. So, instead of being normal ass white bread white people and investigating or dying, we decided to turn the duck around and go home. It was an uneventful walk back, but when we left that area, it was back to rain, mud, and fog. I know for a fact that this place we were at doesn't exist. Not only from my memory of these trails, but I also got on maps and investigated. Absolutely nothing like what we saw. So what was it? Where were we, and how do you explain it? No idea. I've even been back to hike these trails, albeit in the daytime. I never saw the place again. When I was six years old, I lived in a small town in western Washington state. The city is very close to a forest area, and the population is mostly backwoods, country type. In the year 1998, I think, I was living in town. A night came when something strange and unique happened. My child mind couldn't fully grasp what was happening, but neither could the adults who witnessed this. My parents, my grandparents, my uncle, a police officer, and all of our neighbors witnessed a large number of floating or flying green balls of light. They were around softball size, maybe a little bigger. My mother has reminisced about the night and told me about how they chased my grandmother's car up the street and would pace the local traffic. A family friend admitted to seeing them on the nearby highway that night. My family has a very religious background, so their thoughts were that this was sinister and evil, but my memories are different. I vividly remember the green balls connecting in lines of five or so and spinning around like a baton and then unlinking to fly freely again. They would hover just above the street, up around the street lights, and just everywhere in between. My mother kept ushering my brother and me inside out of fear, but I was not afraid. This may have been because I was young and unconditioned, but the lights didn't seem dangerous to me. There must have been at least 100 of them. I have theories about them, but I've never been able to find any other encounters, so this is my newest attempt. I've even put up local flyers with my email to try and get anonymous stories. People in that area just don't like to talk about this stuff. To the credit of my religious family, they did seem to cause the lights to leave. I remember the last time I saw them was when my grandmother was praying and telling them to leave. They suddenly stopped, and all at once they shot up into the sky and disappeared forever. I have wanted to see them again ever since. I'm 27 now, and I'm still left wondering what they were. My main theory is extraterrestrial. My mother supplements this because she remembers seeing a large craft with spinning lights on it in the sky. I have actually dreamt of this as an adult. Anyway, please, if you or anyone you know has seen these lights or anything like this, I would find a lot of peace in just knowing that my little hometown is not alone. I don't know why, but I recently started thinking about an event that happened roughly around 2013 to 2014 when I was about 14 years old. I have never experienced hallucinations in my life, and my family has neither. Back then, the Slenderman hype was at its peak, and of course I wanted to reenact the game with my brother. So I drew some figures, similar to the game, on some A4 paper sheets and went into the woods next to my residence. It was midday, and my brother, two years younger than me, was fiddling with some sticks at the entrance of the woods. Meanwhile, I was nailing the sheets of paper to some trees. Even though it was sunny, I felt like this place had a weird vibe to it this day, so Dummy continued nailing the papers to the trees thinking that the atmosphere would make the game even better. About 15 to 20 minutes after I started nailing the papers, I came upon an old fallen tree with its roots sticking out of the ground. As I passed it, I felt something strange going on, it wasn't a sound, just a feeling that I had to turn around. As I did exactly that, I saw an approximately 2.5 meter tall figure, all black except for its face, standing about 4 to 5 meters away from me. It had no facial features and just stood there, watching me. The whole encounter lasted about two seconds before I turned back around, screamed at the top of my lungs, and bolted towards my brother's location. I was in total panic, running like my life depended on it. I felt relieved when I saw my brother fiddling with some rocks on the side of the road. I tried explaining what happened to him, but he just thought I was messing with him. The game was cancelled, and I made sure to stay by his side while taking off all the pictures I nailed to the trees. I went back to the spot of the encounter with him and examined it clearly, trying to tell myself that I had just seen an illusion or something, 
but nothing even remotely resembled that figure or was that black in the area. I kept this encounter mostly to myself and never talked about it anywhere, thinking everyone would just write it off as a troll or a spooky story, my family is all heavily religious, unlike me, who is an atheist. The whole thing happened in France, in the 92nd department. To this day, I still have no explanation for what I saw. Maybe it was Slenderman, maybe it was another similar entity. I didn't get a clear look at it since all my instincts were telling me to run, but I am sure that this thing really was there. I lived on the Navajo Nation and have seen many things. The first takes place in the Chuska Mountains in the 1980s. My friend was about 6 years old and was up in the mountains for a family reunion at the family cabin. The cabin is in a meadow with a stone well near the tree line. They spent the day doing typical reunion things, i.e., three-legged races, flag football, and whatnot. The sun starts setting, and the families retire to the cabin and call it a day. The older people plan to sleep in the two bedrooms, and the kids would sleep on a bed or cot set up in the living room. All was well, and the kids were tucked in bed. My friend, let's call her Sandra, is uneasy and reluctant to go to sleep. She is wide awake as everyone falls asleep. Sandra tosses and turns, unable to shake her weird feeling. Suddenly, her feeling turns immediately to fear as she hears something big, something heavy, making its way across the porch. Sandra fears that it may be a bear looking for food, little did she know it would be much worse. She could make out the shadow of something large and black as it passed the window. It's making its way to the door. She sees that the family didn't lock the door. Sandra is watching the door, too scared to move or scream. She sees the doorknob rattle back and forth. Whatever is trying to open the door succeeds. The room floods with the most putrid stench, and she sees a large human hand make its way through the door. Sandra finally summons her strength to scream, Dad. Her father runs in and sees Sandra pointing at the door. He sees the hand and runs to the door, yelling, Hank. His brother. Grab the gun. Whatever was at the door runs. It was a full moon, and in the moonlight, they saw the creature run across the yard. Hank, with a hunting rifle in hand, looks through the scope and sees the creature crouching behind the well. Sandra's father assumes it is a bear and tells Hank to shoot. Hank pulls the trigger and hears the bullet ricochet off the well. All thought of this being a bear is diminished instantly when the creature stands up on two feet and runs towards the tree line. They never saw the creature again. I know this sounds crazy, and I would not have believed it. But I saw a stick man in the woods, and it seemed so confused. I was walking in the woods, looking for some pine cones. When I hear something, I think. I move over, trying to be quiet, and find a stick man just there. It was standing by a fallen tree, staring at it. I stood there for a bit, then turned around. It saw me and seemed to be as confused as I was. It stared at me and seemed to want to say something but couldn't. It seemed to be a bit sad after a bit. It ran off with amazing speed but was also stilted. I sat on the fallen tree and noticed the ground had a little dead spot on it. I was out running a tank trail alone around 1900, 7 pm. I had my headphones in and was just cruising to some techno. No more than 50 meters in front of me, a grey or white humanoid figure runs from the tree line on the left side of the road to the tree line on the right, faster than I've ever seen a human move. I stopped and yelled out no ducking bueno and proceeded to quick pace backpedal while scanning to my 2 o'clock. I got about 500 meters from the sighting and called one of my guys. He came hauling down the road and linked up with me. Ironically, he tells me that during the land navigation portion of Best Warrior Comp, he and another NCO were literally chased through the woods by what they called a Wendigo. Mind you, these dudes are ducking pipe hitters, 2-3 SF combat deployment types. Not the kind of cats that are scared of some wild Native American folklore. I know what I saw, and it blew my ducking mind. Has anyone seen one of these Wendigos in upstate New York? Me and my boyfriend both have extensive experience in the woods. I hiked across the PCT from Ashland to the Bridge of Gods at the border of Washington, and that took six weeks. I've always enjoyed the outdoors, and I've never felt unsafe, even when getting close to wildlife such as bears. My boyfriend grew up in a rural area surrounded by farmland, so he's also comfortable with the outdoors. We decide to go camping at Rimrock Lake, which is about 45 minutes away from Yakima, Washington, and this region of Washington has an abundance of Native American land, history, and Native people, of course. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but I thought I'd add it. We end up getting to the lake at about 10.45 p.m. As we pull into the entrance, I immediately get a bad feeling. I have only felt something like this a handful of times in my entire life. I tell my boyfriend basically, this place is giving me a bad vibe, man, and he says I'm just scared of the dark, 
utterly dismissing my feelings. As we round a curve, I'm struck with the reality that I've had a dream about this place, his car, a crown Victoria, the specific shape of the road, the light from his headlights, it wasn't deja vu. It was straight out of a dream I had when I was maybe 12 years old. I tell my boyfriend, I've dreamt about this place. Everything about it. I go into more detail than that, but you get the idea. In my dream, there was a pale, creepy face with reflective eyes staring at me through the trees, and I just remember running as fast as I could from it down the road. Again, he considers what I'm saying but ultimately disregards it. We pull up to the campsite and set up pretty fast. Maybe 15 minutes and we've got our tent up, a fire going, and my boyfriend has a cigar lit since he's terribly addicted to the nasty things. As we sit around the campfire, he's puffing away, and suddenly we hear this wildly loud screaming. It sounded like a group of college kids screaming their drunken asses off, but it didn't sound quite right, if that makes sense. It sounded like men and women screaming in perfect unison, the high and low screams melding together. I instantly try to rationalize the strange sound. It was maybe a mile away, just over a hill, possibly. Moments later, we hear it again, but in the opposite direction, and it's ducking closer. It is now probably a half mile away. I swear to God it sounded more disturbing, realizing that sound is not human at all. I don't know if it was more distorted and alien or if the proximity allowed me to hear it better. We begin to quietly discuss how that sound is not normal. Neither of us, in all of our years of hiking and traveling, has ever heard something remotely like that. Moments later, the sound is not further than a football field away. My boyfriend puts his cigar down, grabs his gun, and we agree to ignore it and no longer speak of it for the rest of the night. We hop in our tent and wake up to a gorgeous sunny day. His cigar was missing that morning. We talked about it a bit that day, and it still freaks us out thinking about it. I believe that when it sounded far away, it was actually very close. These creatures have the ability to sound far away when, really, they're not far at all. I heard from some people that the further they sound, the closer they are. Thoughts, feelings, opinions? The story is 100% real. This was a few years ago. Well, it was just like any ordinary weekend. Me and my stepbrother were playing around in the yard and having fun. We live a nice way out in the woods, so we're surrounded by trees on all sides. Well, I don't remember why I looked, but I suddenly felt compelled to look in the woods. I saw what looked like a black figure with blood red eyes. The color of its skin was like some kind of vana black, as it seemed to absorb some of the light around it. It was a good deal, but what was most unsettling was that you couldn't see any of its body, just its head poking from around the tree. It didn't move or anything, it just stood there, staring at us. I just thought that I was seeing things, as I had watched a ton of movies, so I asked my stepbrother if he saw it, and he described it the same way that I did. Well, we did what kids do and just forgot about it and went on with our day. The next day, I was curious if it was still there. So I and my brother went back to the same spot and looked for it. I managed to find it first, and I saw the entire thing. It looked to be about six feet tall, and its whole body was black. I believe that it was covered in hair, but it was far enough away to tell for certain. Then, to my surprise, it jumped about three feet to its right and landed behind a tree that was way too small for it to hide behind, but the rest of its body disappeared. Its jump was perfect, as it went back to the same position as it was when we first saw it, only its head poking around from the tree. I pointed it out to my brother, and again, he saw it, but after it jumped. We checked again the next day, and it wasn't there. I haven't seen it since. I live in North Carolina, if the location fits any lore that I am unaware of, but to this day I don't have a clue what that thing was. I was hiking alone on a semi-popular trail in the Chuckanut Mountain Range in Washington State. I remember not seeing anyone the entire hike, which was unusual for the area, but I didn't think too much of it. After reaching the viewpoint of this hike, an uneventful ascent, I turned around and was making my way down some time in the late afternoon, maybe 2 or 3 p.m. About one quarter of the way down, I got that common silence falling over the forest, with even the light breeze seeming to stop. I turned around and noticed a fern on the ground was moving. I moved closer to see what the cause was, and there was nothing there, and that scared the shit out of me. This fern was standalone, not in a thick patch of ferns like you commonly see them, not on a hillside, and I could see all around the fern, including the ground. I was thinking of a small animal, a squirrel, or something. But I don't know how to emphasize enough that there was nothing there that could have been hidden or that I didn't see. It was slightly off the trail, like three feet, so I could circle it and do exactly that. I don't know why I was so drawn to this in the first place, but it was just weird. After about 30 seconds of investigation, 
Things get really freaking freaky. I started hearing a voice. Not in English, but speaking in an Eastern European language, from what I assume. I couldn't understand it, and I couldn't tell where it was coming from. I got the chills and the other common feeling of someone or something watching me. The voice lasted for about 10 seconds, too, like that feeling that it was coming from all around. At this point, I drew out my pistol because, duck that. I'm slowly backing away from the fern. The voice has stopped, but the forest is still dead. Now I don't know if this was my instinct, a voice I actually heard, or an auditory hallucination from being so freaked out, but something said, run. Like a whisper. So I followed this advice. I holstered my pistol and took off down the trail. I didn't see anyone else the entire time I was sprinting down. I don't know what happened, and I haven't had any other occurrences out in the woods. This happened in southeast Minnesota. I am not going to be giving the exact location, but it was in a smallish forest on a long bike trail. One more quick thing. It was really windy this day. My friend, whom we will call S, and his father were on a bike ride. It was about a 12-mile bike ride. So they are doing their thing when, about 5 miles away, S sees what he thinks is a deer. They keep going, and S sees a flash of brown next to them in the trees, and it is like this thing is running next to them. Like keeping pace, but he doesn't hear anything. He points it out to his dad, and his father says that it's probably a deer, but he agrees that it is really weird, so they keep going. They get to this little beach where they usually rest and look at the river. S notices something feels off. He notices that, first of all, there are no trees swaying. Secondly, there are no animal noises. Then he realizes he didn't see any animals the whole time they were there. Except for the deer. The silence was heavy. It was like every animal left, the woods were silent. S tells his dad that he isn't feeling very well and that he wants to go home. His dad begrudgingly agrees. They get on their bikes, and S is almost hyper aware of his surroundings. They go for a while until S sees a flash of brown again in antlers. They keep going until they hit this clearing. The clearing looks like a big field with trees around it and a bike trail through it as they enter the clearing. S looks back, and there is the ducking beast standing on its hind legs, and he said it was like 9 feet tall. It had antlers, and it looked like it had a deer head or some shit. He said he was terrified. They finally got out of the woods, the wind was back, and there were animal noises again. I think this was a Wendigo, but I am not sure. I honestly don't know if I believe him, but we are in Minnesota, and it wouldn't be impossible but are we a bit too far south for Wendigos? If you have any ideas or theories, please let me know. I went hiking recently at a national forest, and I got maybe a mile or two, I didn't go too far. I was playing music on my phone. Afterwards, I got to a spot where the trees were going over the trail with branches, and it was darker. I stopped, turned off my music, and ate some pistachios. Then after, I looked for a bit, wondering if I should go further because it was almost five. After waiting, I hear a short, loud, high-pitched woo. It was on the left side of the trail, and it echoed. I could tell this noise was only about 100 feet away. Then I hear it again, but this time louder, as if it wanted something to respond. Very shortly after, I heard the same noise, but on the right side, it also echoed. This reminded me of when I was doing logging and me and other people on crew would communicate what this was, but not like what I heard. I decided to quickly leave the trail. Getting about a fourth of the way back, I hear it again, but in a different spot, but at the same level where the noise originally came from, as if maybe it was going with me. After that, I heard an owl. It hooed once. Then it got really loud, like it was catching prey or fighting. I didn't know owls could be so loud, it was ear-piercing and echoed. There was a lot of rustling, and the rustling also echoed. Any thoughts? I was camping in the Red River Gorge circa 1992. It was one of my first trips to the area and I was excited about seeing a new patch of woods and the various points of interest there. The first night there, we had a great sight on the edge of a huge valley, probably four miles from the parking lot on one of the trailheads. The campfire was just about to expire, and its glowing coals provided most of the illumination. I stood up to make for my tent when I heard it, the blood-curdling scream or howl from the valley below that froze me solid with fear. It continued at least four times, each tortured yelp echoing loudly in the darkness with a sound I've never heard before or since. I ran into the tent and cowered in fear until I didn't hear anything, and the next day we hiked in what I thought was the direction of the sound, but no evidence of anything appeared, and to this day, I still don't quite know what the hell made that kind of disturbing cry. I was walking with the dog in the woods of Connecticut, and we were standing basically still as she was sniffing around. About 50 feet from the trail, I hear a lot of ruckus. 
Like a lot. My first thought was what a mountain biker, but I don't believe their trails run along where I was. Then high schoolers hanging out or something, but this was during school hours. I kept looking in that direction, like an animal on alert. I saw something white, I saw no other color, nothing of definition, but it was solid, I'd say a little bigger than me, I'm 5 feet 6 100 pounds, and it moved quickly from behind one tree to another closer by me. I was in army green, so my thought was that it was a lot easier for me to see it than it was to see me. But that kind of movement is deliberate in my mind. Then I heard the noise, maybe 75 feet to the right. After that, the noise stopped completely, and I was thoroughly scared. Like stopped. I was mostly scared because it seemed so unnatural, and if it were human or animal, I'd think my German shepherds would have noticed it way before we heard it. I've heard of people doing witchcraft in the woods in the next town over. I've always seen a lot of cairns there, and today I saw a gnome statue sitting on this big tree root overlooking the water. I'm sure it was nothing, but my brain definitely picked up on it. What could it have been? I grew up bumming around the forests in England, so I was no stranger to them. One day we are having a party for a friend's birthday, we are about 14-15 at the time, and her house has a private woodland that only her family uses, so we are allowed to have full use of it with no supervision. We decide to split up into pairs and play a hide-and-seek, sardine-type game where you look for each other, and then once you find another pair, you join forces until the final two teams find each other. Me and my partner, W, hear about other friends, J and Y, so we jump into the brambles in the hope of ambushing them, but they never pass us, so we assume they travel the other way, and we mishear the direction of sound. But we are also aware that this is a hunting game, we get low, and as we walk towards where we think they are, we also look in the hedgerows and brambles in case they also plan to startle us. We are about 5 minutes into stalking our friends down this dirt path, and we both look to our right as we hear some movement. That's when we see a shapeless figure about 15 feet tall move between trees seamlessly, as if it were floating unencumbered by feet or stepping around the bracken. It was also solid black, not like a shadow that is angled and translucent but thick, solid black. It only took approximately 3 seconds for this thing to move 20 feet from behind one silver birch to behind another, and then it was gone. Me and my friend both looked at each other, lost for words, which is quite rare for two teenage girls, and without confirming verbally what we had just seen, we both bolted down the road until we came across our friends. One time I bought around 2 to 3 grams and wanted to smoke. My parents are very strict about weed, so I couldn't just roll up and smoke in my house. So, like an idiot, I thought it would be a good idea to go for a long, blunt walk in the woods. I've done it 10,000 times and knew exactly what trail I was going to take and everything since I basically lived in these woods as a kid. But it was like 4.30 in the afternoon, and it's winter, so it gets dark pretty early. I didn't care, though I had my phone and a lighter. I also carry my pocket knife everywhere I go, just to be safe. As I was walking through the woods, I barely lit my blunt when, all of a sudden, I heard a noise. I shine my light over and see what seems to be a deer. So I just shrug it off and continue my walk. 10 minutes in, and I'm starting to feel pretty high. I decided it's too cold to walk anymore because I didn't want to ruin my day with the cold. I start my walk back to my house when I see the same deer. But this time I got a good look at it. It was tall, maybe 6 feet 5 inches or maybe taller. I'm 17 and 5 feet 8 inches, so I'm not small, but I'm not the biggest. But after I realize how tall it is, I look at its body, and it looks like it got shot. It was bleeding profusely, but it was past hunting hours, and I was less than 200 feet from local apartments, and I'm pretty sure I'd hear a gunshot. But I didn't. After seeing the blood, I saw its face. It's a ducking face. The way this thing looked at me instantly sobbed me up. Its jaw was half hanging off and bloody. Its skull was showing. But the worst part was the eyes. The cold, dead black eyes. After standing there just looking at this thing, after a solid minute or two, it starts walking towards me. One step at a time. Its movements were jagged and jerky. It's kind of like a broken toy that's supposed to be able to walk. I come to my senses after seeing it walk and realize it's on the trail leading back to my house. As I said, though I basically grew up in these woods, I knew every path and where every path took you. So I turn around and make a break for it. As I do, I hear this ear-piercing scream unlike anything I've ever heard before. I kept running and running till I made it home. But the entire time, it sounded like it was right behind me. I make it to my house, run straight to my room, and cry. I had never seen anything like this. I got to school the next morning and asked my friends if they heard the scream that night because we all lived pretty close to the woods. None of them had heard it and thought I'd just smoke some laced shit. But I know I didn't, I can't just imagine something like this.
I have gone back a few times, but I have never seen it again. I just want some insight about what this thing might be. I live in the middle of Pennsylvania, on the side of the Susquehanna River. But I didn't think Wendigos were native here. Please help me and tell me what you think it might be. It'd be greatly appreciated. This happened about four years ago. I worked a swing shift, and it was 11 p.m. to midnight when I got home. My dog was in the backyard. I went inside and took off my shoes right away, getting ready to take a shower. However, my dog started barking frantically. This was common for him, as he was protective. I would check if there was actually a problem every time, just in case. I went out on the deck in the backyard. He was barking at the bottom of the stairs, facing away from me, which was unusual for him to do. I started talking, and he stopped barking immediately. Then I heard very loud, heavy breathing. I thought it was my dog panting, but he was not. The sound seemed to come from above me, and he was standing below me. It sounded like someone was hyperventilating, like they were trying to breathe as loudly as possible. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. Well, I decided to investigate. I went down the stairs and examined my yard and the next door neighbors, this was a suburban area. When I got near where I heard the breathing, I suddenly heard the sound from a yard farther away. Once I got to that yard, the sound jumped to the next yard. Being young and dumb, I continued down the street. Every time I got close, the sound would jump. It always sounded the same. It was the same loudness and pitch, always the same distance away. I continued down the road until I reached a bend. My feet hurt, so I stopped for a minute. I realized that, due to the curve, I could not see the place where I heard the sound, but it seemed to be just within the edges of a wooded area. I was seriously considering chasing after it when it occurred to me how foolish it was to be investigating alone like that, especially without shoes. My phone was dead. I suddenly felt like I was a prey animal, and some kind of predator was trying to lure me farther away. I immediately turned and walked back as quickly as possible. Probably it was just anxiety from being alone in the dark, but I could not stop thinking that something terrible would have happened if I went any farther. I never heard that sound again or had any weird experiences like that. I no longer live in that area. The best mundane answer I have is that it was a bird of some kind. What is most creepy to me is that I have since read stories of people following a noise and then having a feeling of something luring them into the woods. I know a lot of these stories are probably either not true or have simple explanations. If anyone has suggestions for what I heard, I would love to hear them. This was in the US, in the Midwest. It happened in the summer of 2016. My friend and I spent the month of July at my mom's house in the countryside. One afternoon, my friend, my dog, and I went on a walk or hike near a lake, and I noticed a few weird things, but nothing too unusual. For example, a deer came out of nowhere and ran really, really fast towards the lake, which was where we came from. There was also an abnormal amount of flies behind a tree, but I joked about the forest being the perfect place to bury a cadaver, I wanted to scare my friend as the dumb 14-year-old I was, and continued to walk. My friend was getting tired, so she got slower and was now behind me, whining about how stupid hiking was. She was really noisy, if you add the sound of leaves and branches cracking under her steps. But all of a sudden, she stopped talking and froze. I turned around to see why she went silent, and I swear that was the first time in my life I saw true fear on someone's face. She looked terrified and couldn't talk, but she was looking behind me, so I turned around once again and saw him. A man was there, walking on a hiking trail 20 meters, 65 feet, I think, away from me. I know it doesn't really sound that paranormal when I put it like that, but here are the weird parts. 1. He wasn't looking at us, even though we were really close, and there was no way he hadn't heard my friend complaining or even the sound of our steps. 2. My dog doesn't let anyone near me or his territory, but at that moment, it was as if he didn't hear, smell, or see that guy. He didn't growl, bark, or do anything when he's usually very protective. 3. He was moving in a straight line but wasn't moving his legs in a walking motion, it was as if he were floating, and he didn't make the cracking sounds that were inevitable since you know there are branches everywhere in the forest. 4. He followed the trail for a few meters and, at some point, walked behind a tree, so we waited for a few minutes because we were expecting to see him on the other side of the tree, but he literally disappeared. 5. After that, me and my friend talked about what just happened to be sure we saw the same thing, and we both realized the man had no face, just blurry pale skin covering his head. I'm a very skeptical person with no inclination toward spirituality. I firmly believe that there's a rational explanation for everything, and I'm still that way, but I don't have any explanations for what happened to me and my friend. 
If you have any ideas on what it means to encounter a faceless person, or if you think the flies and the deer are connected to him, I'd love to hear your theories. I have recently moved onto family land and decided to explore some of the property that we own, Appalachian Mountain slash Hill Terrain, just in case you were wondering. Anyway, the area I decided to explore starts at the bottom of this hill. We have a gate and road for the old house seat, so I essentially have to walk up a steep as hell portion until it gets to where a coal company has worked on some of the top, flattening it out. So being by myself, I had a radio linked to one at the house, a backpack full of water, an AK, and my Glock for protection, because I can, as well as hearing protection that also amplifies sounds a bit, listen to anything moving close to me. So just as I am about to get to the flat top, I thought I had heard a female? Or maybe even a child say a quick word, and naturally I stopped and looked around, but I heard nothing after I stopped. Once I had made it to the flat area at the main top, which was very beautiful, I might add, I heard the voice again. It was almost like something or someone was watching me and messing with me once I got up there, and I had a feeling of uneasiness build up. It only seemed to have been around where the job site met the tree line, because once I was out in the fields, it was very peaceful, and I didn't feel as anxious. It wasn't a shout, nor did it seem distant, it sounded as if someone or something was right next to me when it happened. About six weeks ago, I was walking my dog and decided to take him into the woods directly behind the house. I had only been back there once, and it was very brief, so I didn't have time to see much of anything. As we got past the initial barrage of trees and foliage, I was surprised at how it opened up into a giant clearing with a pond and everything. It was like a natural paradise. Imagine a giant circle with trees surrounding you 360 degrees. How I didn't know this was back here beats me, but this is where the story gets strange. You know how your eyes suddenly bring things into focus, like you could be just staring off into nothing and focusing on something that's been right in front of you? Well, that's exactly what happened in this situation. I found it strange that not even my dog could sense this thing, whatever it was. So there I am looking around, right dog in hand, well, loosely anyway, and it's like I said about the eye to brain thing. I apparently didn't notice it until the last second, and neither did my dog, who knows how long this thing has been there. But suddenly it just popped out and was brought into focus that this eyed thing was starting at me. It was humanoid looking and a light brown in color, I would say. I froze and didn't move the whole time, my dog isn't even acknowledging this presence, which in hindsight makes me grateful that he didn't cause it, which could have made the situation worse. If I had to judge, I would say it was about 5 feet tall, however, it was crouching as well, so I'm making an estimate here. It made no audible sounds or gestures of any kind but continued to just stare at me. I remember being so scared that I thought I was going to have a seizure episode. So I have epilepsy, and too much stimulation or excessive excitement leads to seizure activity. That's how freaking frightened I was of the thing. As we continued to lock eyes, my fear subsided and was replaced with a cautious wonder of sorts, and no, I didn't really see his eyes, they were too far away, but he was definitely staring me down. I am guessing that the entity was about 30 feet from me, perhaps further, but no further than 40 feet. Suddenly it's as if it decided, I, it was time to go, and quickly, and I mean, so flippin' fast, it took off into the dense woods, and I of course went after it to absolutely no avail. Whatever it was has now disappeared, and I know how I emphasized its speed, but there's no way it would be completely out of sight. I would have at least seen it running off in the distance, so what it was and where it went, I have absolutely no idea. I can say that those 12 or so seconds we locked eyes were the most intense fear I've ever felt. I live in a fairly rural area. My house sits a good distance from a main road, and behind it is about 100 acres. The nearest neighbor is hundreds of yards away. So basically, pretty peaceful and quiet. I've hunted and fished my whole life, alone since I was 12. So over the last 12 years, I've seen and heard pretty much all my state has to offer as far as wildlife goes. Also behind my house are a few cattle. All the land is fenced, and there is an old barn, literally 100 years old, which sits at the opening of a hollow with a stream running out. The fence line is at the top of the small ridge line, so one side is pretty steep and rocky, the cows can't get up it. That being said, I was outside, at the edge of the dark, feeding my chickens, and my great Pyrenees went off and ran to the edge of the yard, facing that barn, growling and barking. I walk over with my GSD, who is stuck to my side growling, and I hush them both and listen, assuming to hear coyotes yipping or deer trotting through the woods. But no, I hear what sounds like a cow mooing or baying. Like when you take a calf away or something is wrong. They aren't due to drop calves until next month, but this isn't right, it's a bit deeper and just sounds off. So I worry and go grab some lights and a gun, hop on my four-wheeler, and head up there, 
thinking something is wrong. By this time, it is completely dark. I start at the old barn and listen, but nothing happens. I know the sound came from that hollow, but there's no way. Maybe it tried to hide to have its calf, so I pushed on. Nothing but water is running. Everything went quiet, frogs and crickets. But nothing. So I go to the actual barn and find the cows all accounted for eating hay. I said another, so I will tell you the first thing that really startled me. I had been living in this house for a couple months and was outside doing some work, and it was dark, so I went inside after putting up my GSD, he was only a few months old, and I didn't want coyotes to get him, and I hear whistling, not like a bird, it's dark, and like I said, it wasn't bird-like. Kind of like a person? I don't know how to explain it. I lurked here looking for answers, but anyway, I found myself wandering towards the noise. I get probably halfway from the house to the edge of the fence, and it stops. 30 yards, maybe. And it turns into growling. Chills run up my spine. I go for my pistol, but I don't have it on me. Next, I hear brush breaking and thuds from stepping, and I see some movement through the trees with my light, it was a green spotlight, so I'm not 100% on the color, I want to say gray though, and it tore through the brush and was gone. I ran inside, got a gun, and pursued what little I could without getting too far in the thick brush and potentially exposing myself to whatever it was. What whistles and growls? What can sound like a cow? Anyone have any ideas? So in 2017, myself and four buddies went on our annual road trip, and this particular one went throughout the West, stopping in Grand Tetons National Park for several nights. We were all excited as we had not been to the park before, and once we arrived, we visited the visitor center, determined the less occupied trails in the park that we would check out, and grabbed a map. The next day, we decided on a trail between the two oceans and Emma Matilda Lakes outside the loop, which was just over 13 miles. We started out in mid-morning, and the sky was pretty clear. There were a few scattered clouds, and I believe it had rained recently, but it didn't look like we'd have any weather. The hike began as any other, and at about mile two, we passed the shore of the first lake and spotted a group of NPS staff who were repairing a small bridge. We took the opportunity to sit down and enjoy the view while eating a snack. It's at this moment that the weather seemed to deteriorate rapidly, and it began raining, and the sky turned very dark. This was unusual as it had seemed clear earlier, so after sheltering under a few large trees and letting the storm pass, we continued on. A ranger had told us about a spike in recent bear activity, so we were aware that wildlife may be in the area, so we're chatting and taking in our surroundings while staying pretty alert. After a few more miles, the trail became extremely narrow, approximately one person wide, and the forest on either side became thick, like the thickest forest you've ever seen. I remember remarking that it looked like Blair Witch Country, and the forest almost seemed to consume the trail. It's at this point, walking along the trail, that myself and one friend who was in the front of the pack distinctly heard a clear, loud, and audible woman's voice. It sounded as if a woman was maybe 15 meters ahead of us, around the bend, and speaking to someone. We continued walking, and when we got around the bend, we were stunned to see nothing. The hairs on the back of my neck immediately stood up, and we looked at each other in shock and reiterated that we definitely heard a woman. The other three guys then approached and asked us if we were okay, as we were pale, and we told them what we had heard. They then told us they too had heard a woman as they approached, and they thought the two of us who were ahead had been talking to a fellow hiker. We all looked around frantically, but the forest had turned silent. There was no wind, and everything seemed to be going slowly. The weird thing was that there was one very tall tree about 50 meters from us that was swaying from side to side, but as I said, there was no wind, and the forest was silent. It wasn't just moving slightly, it was caught in a large gust. The clouds had blown back over and were an ominous gray. We all kind of looked at each other, and after calling out a few times to make sure there wasn't an injured hiker around, we began hiking relatively fast away from the spot, and over the next eight-ish miles, we saw one other person near the trailhead and a bear, but that was the only part of the trail where we all felt uncomfortable. We talked about it later that night after getting back to camp and couldn't make any sense of what we had heard. To this day, it still stumps me and gives me goosebumps. In 2019, I hiked the Washita Trail 235 miles with my dog from Lake Wilhelmina State Park in eastern Oklahoma to Pinnacle Mountain State Park near Little Rock. On one day of hiking, I was planning to get to a well for camp that turned out to be a very dirty pond, and I had no choice but to hike another 6 miles to a creek where I knew I could reload with some good drinking water. When I arrived at camp at mile marker 175, I found the creek, and just across it from the trail was an old road bed with a fire pit in the middle of it. I crossed the creek, and this is where I set up camp. Before making camp, 
I checked the area thoroughly to kick any rocks or sticks out of the area where I'd set up my tent and lay down to avoid an uncomfortable sleep, and nothing was out of the ordinary. I quickly set up camp, made dinner, and brushed my teeth because I arrived at camp about 30 minutes before sunset. Not five minutes after I lay down to go to sleep with my dog right next to me, he raises his head and perks up. Let's put on a muffled bark. It wasn't loud and alarming, and I could clearly tell he was alerting to something but restraining himself. Since I hiked so much that day, 25 miles, I was incredibly tired, and once I laid down, I wasn't getting up. I figured a raccoon or some scavenger had come into camp to search for scraps. As I lay there, I remember hearing something graze by the tent, but once again, I was tired and had no interest in getting up. I quickly fell asleep after that. I completed this hike in the dead of winter to avoid bugs and in just under 11 days, so it was necessary that I wake up before dawn and prepare to hike due to the shorter winter days. When I woke up, I turned on my headlamp and exited the tent. As I pulled up the tent stakes, I noticed something on the ground too from where my tent lay. It was a deer's leg, intact from the hoof to the scapula, shoulder blade bone, lying right near my tent. The meat surrounding the scapula was gone, and little flecks of bone protruded out from the smooth surface of the shovel-shaped bone. I freaked out because I knew it wasn't there the night before when I cleared the site for my tent. When I arrived at camp, it was still daylight, and that large deer leg was not there. It was placed there overnight as I was in the tent. I packed up camp as quickly as I could and waited for sunrise. Once the sun came up, I continued on the trail, making noise along the way. Okay, so this happened in New Jersey last night. So to understand the story, I'll just give a little rundown of my house. So if you are sitting on my couch and you turn around about 15 to 20 feet away, there will be a big sliding glass door, which will lead to my porch. If you go down the steps and walk about 50 feet, you will be met with pines or pine barrens. If you pay attention to urban legends, you might recognize those woods as the same woods the Jersey Devil lives in. So anyway, it was about 9 o'clock, and I was sitting on the couch talking with my two friends and just watching TV. We were having a good time when I realized that my one friend started to look out back with a puzzled look on his face. I asked what's the matter, and he just said something along the lines of nothing, but I think I saw something in your backyard. So I turn around, and for a split second, I see what looks like two heads peering from around a tree and then immediately ducking behind again. So I'm like, holy crap, what is that? So at that point, my friend grabs a kitchen knife and runs out onto my porch, just yelling for whomever it is to go away. I run out and tell him it's fine, and let's just go back inside. As I do, I see three heads this time. All closer than before. So I shout, get away. I have a gun. Obviously bluffing, I see them dart behind the tree again. And there is gone. I still have no idea what it is, but it is just gone now. I just need any answers. So it was around February of 2017. I was 15 and had a dry throat at the time. For that year, I wanted to build a shed in the middle of the woods in my backyard, mainly to just hang out in. As for a fun project to do for the summer months, so on a cold, dry, windy, but still sunny day, probably around noonish or late morning, I started to hike alone in the woods of my backyard to begin to find a spot to put down the shed. The shape and geography of the section of the property that has the woods are weird. The woods part of the property pokes out like the Oklahoma panhandle, and to get to the deepest woods of my property, where I wanted to build the shed, you must walk up a hill, and then that hill eventually plateaus. Also, that hill is easily the tallest in the general area, and on the day my encounter happened, I was to see hundreds, if not thousands, of feet, especially since there were no leaves on the trees. All in all, it's a two-minute hike, and in the woods, you can see things like rusty barrels and metal fences. Mainly because back in the day, my backyard woods were a popular hunting spot. Which is evident with the rusty metal barrels and the beer cans I found dating back to the 1980s. But yeah, I hike up through the property, and I make it to the Plateau Hill part. Also note that there was someone's house probably a little over 100 feet from where I was, and I had a pretty good viewpoint of their entire property. And then there was a barn in someone's house, quite far from where I was but definitely seeable. So for a couple minutes, I started looking for good spots to put this shed. I eventually picked one and started imagining how I should build the shed, I wanted to start from scratch. While I was doing this, I started to hear a five-note whistle song way in the distance. Now, I'm not a musician, but I'm going to try my best to describe it. It was two long, flat notes with a short break between the two and the next note. Then, followed by a higher pitch swinging up note, then quickly a normal swinging note, then back to a long flat note with a higher pitch than the first two. And whoever was whistling kept repeating it. 
I looked around for a couple seconds to see if I could find whoever was whistling, it sounded like it was coming deeper into the woods, way downhill. But I didn't see anyone. I also checked the house and barn to see if I could see anyone, and sure enough, there was no one. What I also thought was strange was that I didn't hear the rustling of leaves either. The whole wood was covered in them, and the rustling of leaves is loud and could easily give away your location. But there wasn't any rustling. I immediately ignored her, thinking she was probably one of my neighbors or something. Also, please note that the whistling was definitely not an animal but rather a human. Birds have a chirp-like whistle, but this whistling is more breathy like a human. So I went back to my spot, content that it was a person walking in the woods, after all, that is a pretty logical conclusion. But the whistling kept getting closer and louder, still playing the same five notes. And still, there is no one to be seen and no rustling of leaves to be heard. I was very stubborn that it wasn't paranormal and that it had to be a person, despite the fact that whatever is whistling is coming towards me, and I still have no clue who or what is whistling to me. The whistling was going on for well over a minute now, and eventually the whistling sounded so close to me that it felt like someone was quite literally whistling to me five feet away. It sounded like the whistling was also coming from all directions. So now, I started to get a little spooked. I then concluded that whatever this whistling is could be a threat, so I started making my way back to my house, a two-minute hike. One thing that I forgot to bring up on the Hudson Valley post is that I didn't run out of there or anything, I just walked back home. I was kind of spooked, but not terrified or anything. I also felt like if I ran, then whatever was whistling at me would pop out and chase me. So I walked and stayed calm to keep whatever it was at a stalking slash taunting phase. Because it sure did feel like whatever was whistling at me was definitely stalking and taunting me. I'm about a minute away from making it to the backyard of my house. I was still hearing the whistling and such, and I decided to look up, and there it was. Something that was all grey, blurry, with no face or features, a humanoid-like thing, was flying above me counterclockwise. It could have been maybe around 5 to 6 in height and had a wingspan around the same. The thing had the silhouette of a person. With the head, two arms, torso, and legs. Kind of looking like a T with a circle on top, acting as the head. I still trusted my gut, and instead of running, I kept walking, despite the threats, it kept me safe for this long, so mind as well keep doing it. Then finally, I took one step onto the grass of my own backyard, and suddenly everything weird stops, now more whistling, flying things, or a feeling of being in a trance. I remembered smelling roses, though, like it was peaceful. Just after that experience, I didn't want to build a shed in the woods anymore. And for years, even a little bit to this day, I hated being near those backyard woods by myself. When I was around 10 years old, I spent the summers with my grandparents, who lived in the northern parts of Sweden. They had a cabin out in the woods next to a beautiful lake, a long way from the nearest town. We had electricity but no running water, so it was very rural. Just behind the cabin, there were dark, thick woods where an eerie feeling was present each time you ventured into them. Each year I went to my grandparents, and I did so together with my cousin. We lived in a small cabin separate from where grandma and grandpa lived, so when we wanted to go to their cabin, we would have to walk around 30 meters. Our cabin being separate from theirs becomes important later in the story. One summer, my grandpa took us on a long walk out into the woods. My grandpa was always special, and during this walk, he told us stories about strange things happening in the woods, like stories involving trolls and other mysterious beings. On this special occasion, he told us about something that roughly translates from Swedish to little people, small human-like creatures invisible to the naked eye who lived in these woods. As we went deeper into the woods, he told us that these little people sometimes cross the roads where people walked, and when this happened, people wandering those roads would just freeze in place for no apparent reason until the little people had passed the road. My cousin, being a kid, proceeded to joke by suddenly stopping and proclaiming that he had come upon one of the little people trails and frozen in place. I laughed, but strangely enough, my grandpa was not amused. He was adamant that you should not joke about little people while in those woods. We thought nothing more of it and eventually went back to the cabin. Nothing happened for the rest of the day, and later that evening, me and my cousin went to our cabin to go to sleep. We got around three hours of sleep until we were suddenly awakened around three o'clock by commotion going on all around the cabin. The outside of the cabin's walls sounded like they were being scratched by a large bear, small pebbles were raining down on the roof, and we heard scratching coming from underneath our beds. In short, it was very loud and absolutely terrifying. It was like being completely surrounded by noise and chaos. We panicked, ran from our cabin, woke our grandparents, and spent the night in their cabin. The next day, Grandpa brought us back to the woods, where we threw candy into the trees and said we were sorry. 
Nothing more happened after that, and we never made fun of the local legends again. To this day, this is by far the most extreme experience I've ever had. The noise and how it seemed to come from every direction were insane. I am a girl and live in North Carolina, United States. I was 15 at the time of my encounter and was definitely not a believer in anything supernatural, paranormal, or anything of the sort. It happened while I was at a local summer camp. There was absolutely nothing special about that day, no weird lights, people, animals, sounds, etc. It was just the same camp schedule as I'd grown used to in the past two weeks I'd been there. My age group had just finished lunch and was able to persuade our counselor to let us play a game called Scatter Down by the Lake. It's like a giant hide and seek in the woods. Now we had played this at least 20 times before that day and nothing weird had happened to any of us, and we all grew up playing in the woods, so it's not like we had an aversion or fear of it, but for some reason that day when our counselor shouted scatter. And I ran to find a hiding place, it became a whole new ball game. I had run as far as I could while still being able to see the lake, as were the rules, and I had found a huge old uprooted tree that I decided would be the perfect hiding place. So I laid down as close as I could against the ground and waited. I had been there for about 5 minutes when I suddenly heard a voice calling my name in a weird dreamy like voice and not just any voice, my mom's. Now me and my mom are extremely close, thick as thieves, so I'd know her voice anywhere, and I would swear on my own grave that it was without a doubt hers. But I knew it couldn't be her, she was 20 miles away at work, and even if it had actually been her and she'd come to pick me up early, the voice wasn't coming from the lake, it was coming from further out in the woods beyond the border of the camp. I knew I should have run away from this strange mimic mom voice, but I couldn't. It was almost hypnotic, it messed with my thoughts and gave me doubts like well, it could be mom. Or what if she's hurt? And I have to get to her. All these things were flooding into my mind like someone had broken a dam I didn't know was there, until they finally overwhelmed me and emotions got the better of me, and I took off running in the direction the voice was coming from. I ran as far as I could with only this strange voice as my guide. I couldn't have run for more than 5 or 7 minutes when I got to a clearing and the voice suddenly stopped. When I entered the clearing and didn't hear my mom's voice calling me anymore, I finally thought clearly again and started to have little alarm bells go off inside my head saying, you idiot. Or that's not mom. And run. But I couldn't run, I didn't know where to run. I had gotten so far away that I had lost sight of the lake by camp and had absolutely no idea where I was, and I was completely exhausted to boot. With no other options than to sit and catch my breath. I did just that. No sooner had I sat down, more warning bells went off in my mind. I quickly did a 360 degree survey around the clearing and noticed a strange noise. It wasn't the continuation of the voice before, no, it was the distinct sound of chattering teeth, like if you were cold, only there was no one else around, and it was the middle of June in North Carolina. There's no way someone could be cold. And that's when I heard it, leaves and sticks crunch on the edge of the small clearing, and I realized something was watching me and then whatever it was moved in fast in circles around the clearing, almost like it was circling prey, and it was at that moment that I knew whatever it was had led me out there away from the rest of my group, exactly like the predator my instincts had been screaming at me that it was. Without any other option other than to try and escape, I took off in the direction I thought I came from and sprinted as fast as I could, all the while hearing the chittering of teeth and sticks crunching behind me. I didn't know what to do, I didn't dare turn around to see what was chasing me. I knew that if I did, it would slow down, and I absolutely would not. It felt like a lifetime running away from this thing before I finally saw the lake, and even though I didn't think I could, I ran faster than I ever have in my life when I broke the tree line and ran to the lake where I knew my friends were. At that point, I felt safe enough to stop and look back and see just what had been chasing me, but when I did, I only saw a fleeting form running back the way I had come and the distinct sound of chittering teeth. When I finally found my counselor, who was the seeker to find all of us, I was hysterical with fear and hugged her as tight as I could. When I finally calmed down, she tried to get me to tell her what happened, but I just asked, were you calling my name? Before she even said anything, I already knew the answer, after all, it had been my mom's voice that led me away from everyone else, but what she replied with was so much more bone chilling to me. She told me, no one called for you, we didn't know you were gone. Everyone is still hiding, the game isn't over yet. I was camping for the first time at Peaks Kenny State Park in Dover Foxcroft a couple years ago, in late August, and it was pretty dead there. I was with my aunt. We are avid campers, we camp all summer long. It was probably like 11 p.m., and we were sitting by our fire pit, which was right beside a path that went down to the beach, like a half-mile walk through the woods, and there it's real woods, like old-growth forest, with about five feet of just leaf litter and a few trees between us and the path. I was sitting facing the path, and my aunt was sitting alongside it. 
As we're sitting there, I started to get a creepy feeling and was trying not to look at the section of woods beside us because I didn't want to scare myself because I'm honestly pretty scared of the dark and the woods, but I felt like something was standing there right across from me beside the tree there, it was weird, like I felt like I could sense a silhouette but wasn't actually seeing a figure, just like the essence of something being there. If that makes sense, then, all of a sudden, my aunt says quietly and sharply, hey, don't move. And I just froze, and I was like, is there something right there? And she was fixated on the same spot I had been noticing a minute before. There was literally nothing there, but we both felt like something was missing despite seeing nothing. She described the exact same thing as feeling like she was looking at a silhouette that she couldn't actually see. Then we saw a quick blip of light in the empty campsite beside us on the opposite side of the path, and then the same thing down the path about as far as we could see before it became dense forest. There was nobody around, there was no rustling of leaves or anything like that, there definitely wasn't a light from another camper or anything. It was super unsettling. We asked the ranger when we were checking out if he had ever had any strange experiences there, and he was like, oh, like ghosts? And we told him what happened, and he was like, oh, were you near the beach path? And he said that sometimes he feels like something gives the gate its last slam when he closes up the park at night. I live in a small town in Georgia. Most of my life, I lived in a community but recently moved to a more rural area. The house that I am in is around 45 to 50 years old and sits on a good plot of land, so I moved in a few months ago, and nothing was out of the ordinary. I live with my mom, sister, and three dogs. So when I would hear something outside or an odd noise, I would chalk it up to it just being one of them. About two weeks after moving in, things started. One night, I just finished doing all the things I needed to do before bed and was relieved to see my comfy bed. I fell asleep like any other night but woke up around 2 in the morning and morning for this odd noise. Like someone calling for something, I grabbed my phone and then walked over to the window, I live on the second story, to shine my flashlight outside. Nothing, just our yard and the woods. Then I hear it again, this time more clearly. Someone was yelling out for help. I got extremely nervous and took a step back from the window. I was about to walk to my mom's room to tell her, but I stopped myself. I waited to hear it again before going to tell her, and with nothing for around two minutes, I went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, I asked my mom and sister if they heard anything. Both of them said they didn't hear anything and slept like babies. I brushed it off as my mind played tricks on me and went to do some school and yard work. Night comes, and I am letting my dogs run around in the backyard to use the bathroom and have some outdoor time before it lights out. I was playing Clash of Clans on my phone when I realized I didn't hear my dogs playing or walking around. I looked up, and they were staring at something in a little clearing before you hit the woods. I looked in the direction of where their heads were and saw an outline of a deer. The deer was on its four legs but was just staring at me. I told the dogs to come in, and they didn't move a muscle. I kept yelling and yelling until my mom came outside to ask me what the issue was. I told her to look in the direction of the deer, but there was nothing there. The dogs were still staring at something, so I just pulled them inside and locked the door. When I looked out the window, I saw it again, this time closer. I locked every door in the house and headed up for bed. I woke up at around 2 am again to someone yelling, but this time, I wasn't the only one who heard it. My mom sent me a text saying, is that you? To which I replied, no. I listened very carefully to the yelling, this time it was saying Boone. Boone is the name of my youngest dog. I was shitting bricks and ran to my mom's room to talk about what the duck was going on when I froze at the door. I heard something walking outside under my window. I didn't move at all, I was basically pissing myself off, thinking someone was about to break in. It was probably a good time to mention that my sister was at a friend's house for the night, so it was just me, my mom, and the dogs. Whatever was outside walking around didn't sound human. It sounded like a deer or dog walking around. My dogs sleep in my mom's room, so I thought it was that weird deer I saw earlier. Then the most terrifying thing I could think of took place, Boone. The sound of this thing was nothing like I had ever heard before. I ran to my mom's room, and she was already on the phone with the police. Stupidly, I walked to my mom's window, opened it, and said, duck off, Ashley. I heard fast and heavy footsteps run from my side of the house to my mom's side. I closed the window and heard this thing scratch at the walls of the first floor. Then police sirens filled the air, and this thing bolted into the woods. I looked out the window to see it and saw a ducking deer on two legs. The police knocked on our door and got our statements. We walked around the house and saw footprints, scratches on the wooden windows, and even a piece of antler. When the cops left, me and my mom stayed up till light broke the sky. I am very familiar with ski walkers, but I never thought they were real. This was only four days ago, 
and I still have this thing at night. If anyone can help me rationalize this, you are more than welcome to reply. I met a guy in a park in Little Rock, and he told me that he was hiking around a lake at night with his friends somewhere in northwest Arkansas. He said that they were walking back to the car, and all of a sudden, he felt something watching them from behind. The group silently acknowledged the presence and tried to act like nothing was up. They never saw the thing moving, but when they would turn around, it would be somewhere behind them. Creeped them out hardcore, but he didn't describe what it looked like other than that it was featureless and shadowy. When they got to the parking lot sometime later, the lights all flickered in an abnormally synchronous manner. He said they scrambled to the car and got the duck out there. I live a little ways out in the woods, on a small dirt road, with a few neighbors who also live on our small street. It's a quiet place, we all know each other and get along decently. Given that we host little bonfires sometimes and invite the neighbors around to grill and have a few drinks, we often discuss things we've seen lately in our little patch of forest. A group of lovely deer, a mischievous raccoon, or the odd wandering bear are often topics of conversation. However, inevitably, we often end up on the subject of a mutual experience most of us have had with unexplainable phenomena happening around our homes. It's no secret that my woods tend to make people a bit uneasy. It's dark, it's quiet, and that tends to make people tense. I'm definitely not different. I don't go outside in the dark if I don't have to, and I get spooked at times when an animal makes a ruckus. There are some things, though, that I just can't attribute to animals. To start, I have to go all the way back to when I was 13, when I first moved onto this property. I often felt watched at night, I was terrified to sleep without the lights on. I tried my best to ignore it, but I was honestly terrified to be outside at night or be here alone. For my 14th birthday, I decided to face my fears so I could pitch a tent outside and camp in the yard with a few good friends. One of them left in the middle of the night because they were so anxious. Another left early in the morning after barely sleeping all night. The last friend stayed a couple extra days but was creeped out the entire time. She claimed to have briefly seen the apparition of a pale woman with dark hair standing in our yard and felt something touch her at night. She was truly terrified, and I could tell. When I tapped her shoulder, she startled very easily and almost hit me out of fright. This was very abnormal for her. I spoke to my uncle, who lives next door, about the woman she saw, and to my surprise, he claimed to have also seen the same apparition multiple times. He wasn't even surprised when I brought it up. I moved out not long after this, but recently moved back. Since returning as an adult, I've heard several stories from my family and neighbors about weird phenomena like this. My uncle has seen the lady, but also shadow figures, and heard some unnatural noises coming from the woods at night. As a man who has lived out here for over 40 years, he's very familiar with the usual sounds of animals and nature, and he didn't think these sounds were natural. His wife has also seen shadow figures and weird masses of black energy. She claimed to have been pushed over by an unseen force after witnessing one of these black masses of energy. She has never gone outside at night since. My grandmother claimed to have been chased by a shadow entity several years ago on this property while walking back from my uncle's. It stopped at her front door and watched her while she cried and called my aunt and uncle for help, understandably, they said nope. And I told her to light some sage. A couple of neighbors have claimed to have seen similar shadow figures, as well as the apparition of the lady on occasion. I still feel watched, and I regularly cleanse my house to keep whatever is out there as far from my home as possible. A good friend of mine, when I first moved back in, called me with concerns over a dream she had. This was before she had ever seen or set foot on my property. She described my body and property perfectly and described seeing the same pale woman that multiple people have now seen. I was understandably shaken, considering she'd never been to my home at the time and I hadn't really discussed the weird happenings with her. She spent the night once and refuses to do it again. My street is super creepy, and I have come to accept that something more is here. With all the shared experiences, I can't deny that something is out there. It's been here for a long time and seems to make itself known to anyone who spends enough time here. I have lived in the Bitterroot Valley my entire life and have spent a large part of it exploring our local forest lands. We often have people go missing, and most of the time we end up finding them, but there are a few cases that stick out in my mind as odd. The first is the case of Jim Mann. Mann was heading to Bozeman, Montana, to meet up with a friend. Only he never arrived. Mann was known to frequent the Como Lake and Painted Rocks Reservoir areas frequently, so we spent a lot of time searching those areas as we suspected he may have been there before disappearing. I personally spent most of my time around the Painted Rocks area helping with the search. Both areas have bodies of water with small creeks and many rock slides surrounding them. The weirdest part about this is that even with the scale of our search and the number of areas we searched, we never found a single thing. 
man had left his phone in his home and simply disappeared. As far as I know, there are still no leads on what might have happened to him. The second case I can think of also happened in the Bitterroot Valley. I will leave names out of this one as I respect the family's privacy they have asked for, as the case has officially been ruled a suicide even though his body was never located. I personally have met this individual, as he would often come into the grocery store I worked part-time at. Essentially, he went out in the woods in late October to do some hunting. After the night had passed, the family reported him missing, as they were worried because he did have some mobility disabilities. After about three days of searching, we had found nothing at all, and finally word came down that they had found his vehicle. The odd thing about this is that the vehicle was found parked in a pullout along the road and was sitting there with its door wide open. We eventually learned that it sat there running until it eventually completely ran out of gas. Around a day or two later, his hunting rifle was found with a spent casing still loaded in the chamber, meaning his rifle had been fired. Forensics took samples of the dirt to look for blood. The immediate conclusion was that he had committed suicide, and his body was dragged off by an animal. This is also the official story that they eventually went with. The biggest problem with this story is that there was never any blood found in the soil around the area where his rifle was found. The family accepted it was a suicide, even though they allege he had no issues with mental health and never indicated that he was suicidal. Either way, this is one of the few search and rescue operations I have been part of that really left me wondering what really happened. Please keep in mind that I never officially worked for any actual agencies and was simply a volunteer for these incidents. Just remember to be safe when you go out exploring and to always prepare for the worst case scenario. This is a true account of something strange that happened to me and two friends one summer in the early 2000s. It happened in the town I grew up in, with one of the friends being a lifelong friend from childhood and the other a college friend of his. We had gone off to different schools, and being home for the summer, we were just having fun partying and whatnot. This particular night I got together with my friend James, I'll call him and his college friend Mark. It was a hot night, and we decided to jump the fence to our town pool and go swimming. We had done this a dozen times before, have never had any trouble, and only ever needed to keep an eye out on local cops. We got there, hopped the fence, stargazed on top of these canopies, and went swimming. We weren't that loud, as we didn't want to attract any attention if any cops came through looking for kids doing exactly what we were doing. About an hour into being there, all of us in the pool, we heard a low grumble come from the woods that surrounded the pool grounds on three sides. It rose quickly in intensity and volume, with a rapid Doppler effect moving towards us from deep in the woods. It sounded horrible, like a pack of very angry dogs or wolves or something, all roaring ever louder, like talking over one another. We all froze at the beginning of it and just stared into the woods in the direction it was coming from. It came so fast, charging to the tree line and the chain link fence that surrounds the pool grounds. I've never been so frightened in my life. The thing I remember clearly was that there were no sounds of footfalls. Whatever it was, it moved through the woods at a rapid speed, with no discernible thumps of branches being crushed underfoot or branches or anything else being moved or brushed aside. The awful roaring reached a crescendo just as it broke the tree line and got to the fence. Or so our ears told us, because we couldn't see anything there. We all remained frozen in the pool, just staring and waiting for our deaths. I really don't know how long we stayed motionless in the pool, staring, but the sound stopped abruptly when it got to the edge of the grounds. It was such an awful, chilling sound that it made our blood run cold on a hot summer night. After God knows how long we all snapped out of it and got the pool edges, hauled ourselves out, grabbed our clothes, and ran dripping wet and jumped the fence and took off. Now, the thing is, this is the suburbs, only about 20 minutes outside of NYC, so there are no bears, no wolves, and I've never seen a dog without a master, much less a pack of wild dogs here. This was one of the most frightening moments of my life, and I have no idea what it was. I actually completely forgot about the incident until a few years ago, when my friend James brought it up and the entire thing came flooding back at once. The only thing I can compare the sound to is in one Bigfoot documentary I saw, and a man who said he heard one mimic the sound he heard. That's the closest I've heard. Being that this is the suburbs outside of a very densely packed city, and knowing the size of the woods, I find it near impossible for it to be that. These woods are not large at all, maybe a few square miles, and the other sides of the woods are then bordered by businesses, schools, and houses. So I don't really know what it was after all this time. I asked my friend about it again two Christmases ago, and he said he thought it was aliens. I haven't spoken to Mark as he was more of my friend's friend, but I am now curious what he thinks after all this time. It was 2012, my freshman year of high school. I was 15 years old and had been in the company of my best friend that night, let's call her Marie. 
we lived in a fairly small town on the eastern coast of Canada, Nova Scotia, to be exact. It was an old mining community that sat in the middle of the woods. It was an autumn night, and with nothing more for two high school girls to do and homework not being something we specialized in, we decided to go on one of our many town walks. This night in particular had us go a little off the beaten trail, you see, typically we'd have stuck to the main roads and probably ended up at a Tim Hortons before calling it a night and heading back home, but not tonight. Tonight, we decided to walk by the food bank. You might be wondering what the draw of an old food bank is. You see, it wasn't just a food bank. Back when we were still a mining town, our food bank was a train station. Trains would come by and pick up coal that was freshly dug from the mines and take it all across the country. The old train yard was still there, it's now rust-covered cars acting as mock tombs to a much more prosperous era gone by. We'd frequented the train yard with our friends in the past, climbing the cars and sneaking inside, among other things that could have gotten kids hurt, so it wasn't a new place to us at all, and we thought that since it was at the tree line, tucked away in a quiet enough part of town that we could freely walk and chat without the concern of traffic or the like, sidewalks weren't very frequent on that side of town. The sun had already set as we made our way down the long stretch of road, that October chill grasping at our small frames like glue while the all-too-familiar autumn smell of still-dying plant life permeated the air. We were talking to each other about what teenage girls typically babble about, boys, you know, real important stuff? We had been so caught up in our conversation of the most dire importance that by the time we had made it to the fence that lined the train yard, it genuinely took us a moment to notice the noise. It was a very clear scream. We stopped dead in our tracks and began to stare at each other, not so much out of fear but bewilderment. It didn't quite sound like an animal, but it definitely didn't sound human either. I've gotten up close and personal with enough cougars, wolves, and toddlers to know that this screaming we were hearing was caught somewhere in between man and beast. We stood there, glaring into each other's eyes for a few more seconds, before finally turning our attention towards the sound. It was dark, mind you, not pitch black, as there were some street lights around, though few and far between, but we couldn't see anything. From where we were standing, it was just an old train station turned food bank, a rusted out fence, and a couple of unused and falling apart train cars. The screams didn't subside, as we were now staring into the foreground of what became a series of mental photographs of the area. It was then that I realized that just up ahead, the third and final train car sat partially covered from our viewpoint by a few bushes. I had turned my head to Marie, a mischievous grin dawning on my face like a cowl. The last one to the train car has to buy the French vanillas, I exclaimed before quickly jogging along the side of the fence toward the final car. I heard Marie call out, Hey! Wait up! As my feet clearly were acting before my brain. I mean, gosh, this could have been some wild animal or really anything, and I was just running blind. I'm not particularly a brave person, and I'm honestly not sure why I did this or anything else that happens from here on out. I rounded the fence, the screaming getting louder and louder as I strode closer and closer. My heart began to race with both anxiety and sheer excitement. I wasn't sure what I was even getting myself into or what I was expecting to see at all. Needless to say, about a second later, the ever-increasing beating from my chest had come to a standstill as my heart had made itself a new home in my throat. I stopped so quickly. Marie had slammed right into the back of me, but I was so frozen in fear at what I was now looking at that I barely even budged, the screaming still echoing off of the forest so loudly that I could barely hear the faint whisper of an oh my god. Escape Marie's lips. No more than about 20 feet away from us, crouched just under the train car, was a pale, hairless, and naked person. It was just sitting there under the front of the car, screaming into the darkness of the autumn night. Each time it screamed, its arms would leer forward from under the car, they extended out to an unnatural length, almost like two tree branches. We both stood there, frozen in a mixture of fear and confusion. What were they doing? Were they hurt? On drugs? A million questions had begun to race through my head, and one look at Marie's face told me the same questions were racking her mind as well. We must have stood there just watching in complete awe for what felt like five minutes, but realistically, it couldn't have been more than a few seconds, maybe a minute at the most. That's when, in my infinite wisdom, I decided to take a few steps closer. I took my first shaky step towards it. I felt Marie's hand grasp my arm as if to say don't but it was clear that her fear outweighed her functionality as I easily broke from her grip just by continuing forward. I had closed about five or so feet of distance before stopping. I continued to stare at it from my position for another moment before clearing my throat and stammering the words, Hey, are you okay? The second I said those words, any thought of this being a person in need of help had flown out the window and dissipated in the cool nighttime air. It was almost as if someone had hit stop on a recording, 
The screaming it had been happy to emit had ceased, and then. It was staring at us. You need to understand that it didn't seem to even move its head. It was just one second, staring forward into the night, and the next, right back toward us. A faint growl began to seep into the area now from where it was positioned as I took in the details of its face, and I became sure it wasn't human. It had a mouth that seemed to take up the width of most of its face, like a thin crack in a slab of concrete. Its eyes were small but almost glowed in through the darkness, with the most piercing yellow I have ever seen. After it had taken its time to mimic our staring back at us, its crack-like mouth had almost cartoonishly curled into a smiling man-like grin, its lips parting to reveal its long, jagged, and razor-like teeth. The beast and I continued locked into this war of attrition, though it was admittedly clearly more confident in being the dominant one in the exchange of looks. It broke the stare down after another moment, bringing its long, twiggy arms up from under the train car. It wrapped its fingers around the lip of the car and, at a near breakneck speed, kicked itself out from under the train car with a swing, almost like a chimpanzee leaping from one tree branch to another before landing and planting itself on the ground in a pose akin to that of a frog. It continued to gaze, which now had begun to feel as though I was being sized up. My whole body had been shaking at what was akin to Mach 5. I tried to avert my eyes and look anywhere else, as it felt like any moment I would pass out in sheer terror, but I was drawn in. It felt almost like it had me in some sort of trance. I watched as it slowly began to stand, unfurling itself from the position it was in. It just seemed to get taller and taller until what I was looking at was at its full stance. Its entire body is a pasty gray. Its arms had drooped down well past its knees, and its legs hooked in the back near the calf, almost like a goat. I'm not religious in the slightest, though I was raised Catholic in my younger years, and the only words I could think to muster were Hail Mary, full of grace. As I began to pray, I stared down at what I was sure was my end. The creature then leered itself forward, throwing its arms back as its jaw unhinged itself from its skull and dropping down to about its collarbones as it let out one final shriek, the noise embedding itself in my brain and making sure not to ever leave, to forever haunt my nightmares along with the image. I closed my eyes so tight that my head began to hurt. I could feel tears streaming down my cheeks with my lips pierced close so tightly that not even a breath could escape them, and then. Nothing. Silence. Deafening silence. Was it over? That quickly? Was I dead? I slowly opened one eye, peeking out. I saw it, a final look. It had retaken its crouching position, giving us its final glance as well before it turned back to us. An encounter that had felt like it lasted hours swiftly ended in a few mere seconds as the creature leapt from its position to the tree line and then made one final leap into the woods. Just like that, it had vanished. I had almost all but forgotten Marie was there until the softness of her voice brought me back to earth with a Kenzie. What the duck was. I turned to her, her skin had gone sheet white, and her eyes were red with tears. My legs had finally given out from the sheer exhaustion of it all as I had fallen to my knees, Marie quickly running over and catching me in an embrace as we silently wept. I'm not sure too much of what happened after that, it's all a blur, really. I told some people at first, but they were quick to laugh me off as a liar or say that I was simply being overly imaginative. With Marie moving away about a year later and my only witness having gone, that didn't help my credibility. It's been 10 years since then, I no longer live in Nova Scotia and actually live in the same town as my best friend Marie again. We still bring this up with each other every now and again but refrain from telling anyone else out of fear of being labeled crazy. My last words I'd like to say are pretty blunt. If you live in Nova Scotia, Canada, please be careful. There is something living in the woods, and it is not human. I'd like to preface this by saying that this did happen in my backyard. We have a backyard property that extends about 400 acres or so of complete woods. No houses, no camping sites, no people. My closest neighbors are old and stay in their own homes. I'd also like to say I wasn't under the influence. I just left my house an hour ago to get some late night dinner, I didn't get dinner and was starving. Treat yourself, right? Anyway, as I was leaving my front porch, I took a quick glance into my backyard. It was really dark out tonight, it was clear, but there was not a moon in sight. Anyway, as my eyes adjusted, there was this bluish white light coming from my backyard. It wasn't coming from the ground, there was nothing but a light up in the trees with no determined source. It wasn't fading anywhere, and it was more like a fog of light. Anyway, it looked strange to me. I could see the trees, it was illuminating in mid-air, but nothing below. How did it get here? I was wondering if anyone has had similar experiences. I just got in my car, got Taco Bell, and now I'm home. It wasn't really scary, and I just shrugged it off. Living in the woods and seeing so much stuff, it doesn't bug me anymore. 
but I'm just wondering if this has happened to anyone else. Thanks for taking the time to read and provide your insight. Me and a few buddies decided to go camping on Mount Shasta. Driving up the side of the mountain to the camping spot, we all commented on the energy in the air. I just felt heavy. When we got to our campground, all the other spots were vacant, and that was eerie because we were there during peak camping months. Despite that, we moved forward with our plans and partook in drugs and dinner. After dinner, we sat around the campfire when two white school buses with blacked out windows drove past our tents, further down into the campsite, and further up the mountain. Again, we talked about the strange energy and who or what the buses were transporting at this hour. It was about 10 p.m. We shook it off and started to wind down for bed when my buddy, who was in a different tent, unzipped mine and asked if I could hear chanting. I listened and could definitely hear the same monotone chanting. We decided to investigate. We all got dressed and decided to do a recon mission. It was actually very exciting. We brought flashlights, but all agreed not to turn them on to avoid detection. As we crept up the mountain to where we suspected the group was, we spotted the two buses side by side. The chanting was definitely louder, but it seemed to originate from behind the buses. We were pretty creeped out at this point, but we proceeded. Two of us went to the back end of the bus, and three others went to the front so we could keep our profile low and figure out what was happening. As I peeked around the back of the bus, I saw about 30 people in full robes, circled around a woman in a chair and a man in a full robe standing next to her. The man in the middle would chant something in another language, which sounded Latin, and then the circle of people would repeat the same incantation. We spied on this group of people for about three minutes when it dawned on us that this could potentially be a dangerous situation. I signaled to the others in the group to leave, and we speed hiked back down to our tents. We discussed it after and came to the conclusion that it was most likely a cult. I can't speculate what they were doing with the woman in the center. Maybe gangbang, maybe sacrifice, but it all felt very unnatural and unsavory. The next day, we decided to pack up early, and we booked it down the mountain to Weed, Oregon and get a hotel. We still speculate about what we could have stumbled on, and we all get goosebumps talking about it. I'm not sure what we experienced or if there was anything odd about it, but whatever. So, this was a hike up to Half Dome, we had a campground about 20 minutes drive away from the trailhead, and the group was composed of me, my uncle, and my uncle's friend, he'll call him D, there were two girls with us, but they aren't relevant to the story. My uncle and his friend are both Christians, so there were no substances consumed that could induce the feelings I will be talking about. We get to our campsite, set up camp, and go to sleep after eating. We plan to wake up at 4 and start the hike by 4.30. I randomly wake up at 3.30 am, like completely wide awake, and look out of my hammock, and I remember feeling this odd feeling as if I was woken up by something, and I remember looking out at the moonlit scene, the moon was very bright for some reason, and thinking to myself, it looks like a dream. I lay back in the hammock but cannot go to sleep, and I end up waking up my uncle and friend at 3.50. My uncle asks me, were you walking around at night? This is important, and I say no and ask why. He says he woke up for some reason and could hear someone walking around, not like an animal but a person. I say, ha, huh, weird, and we brush it off. We get to the trailhead around 4.30, and as everyone is unloading from the car, D says he's going to use the bathroom, which there are a couple of before the trailhead. I walk behind him for some time before falling behind and waiting for my uncle, who forgot something in the car. The short, straight road from the parking lot runs directly into a T-intersection with the road to the trailhead, and the bathroom is directly across from the intersection through the field a little. Those who have been there know what I'm talking about. We get to the intersection and wait for D to come out of the bathroom. We wait about 10 minutes before I go and check the bathroom, he isn't there. I get back to my uncle and tell him that. He says, weird. Maybe he went back to the car or something, and we decide to wait a bit more. By 5.10, we begin worrying. My uncle goes to check the car while I wait at the intersection to make sure we don't miss him if he goes down the road away from the trailhead. My uncle returns and says he isn't there either. We decide maybe he went up to the trailhead without us for some reason and walked up there in about 10 minutes. He isn't there either. We are kind of baffled now because there are no other logical places he would go. I decide to run back and check the car and bathroom again. I meet him halfway before I get to the intersection. He is sweaty and disheveled, with a weird look in his eyes. I say, where have you been? He says that he went to the bathroom and, when he got back to the intersection, that we weren't there, and that he just assumed we went to the trailhead and started walking, and then met me. I say, what do you mean, we waited at the intersection for over half an hour and checked at the car, bathroom, and trailhead, and you weren't there. He says, well, I don't know, I went to the bathroom. 
He then asks me where my uncle is, I say at the trailhead, and he asks me again. I tell him again, and I note that it was weird that he asked me twice. As we're crossing the bridge to the trailhead, he sees a light off on the river bank and exclaims, oh, maybe that him, and I just look at him and keep walking. I thought his behavior was very strange, like he wasn't thinking straight. We finally get on with the hike, and it goes by as normal, except that we seem to keep losing things, such as my uncle's small red flashlight, one of the girl's gloves, a water bottle, etc. It's like we just simply forgot about the items and couldn't remember where we could have left them. On the way back, it got dark, and we turned on our flashlights. As we neared the end of the hike, after the two waterfalls, it began to seem as if we'd been walking for far too long. My uncle also confirms this, asking me, doesn't it seem like it's taking way longer to get back? I say yes, I was just thinking that. We keep walking, but it still seems we're not making any progress. I've been on that trail many times, and as I was walking, I couldn't spot any familiar landmarks. It was weird. There was this odd feeling in the air, sort of a slight menacing feeling, it's hard to describe. I remember thinking, it feels like the woods are alive. We remark three more times about how long the hike is taking and begin to laugh at it because it felt so ridiculous. After a bit, we finally and suddenly found ourselves on the final stretch and made it back to the car. Now, all of this seemed odd at the time, but I just brushed it off. I only realized how weird those events felt after we got home and my aunt asked my uncle, were you camping? And he said, yeah, how did you know? As we didn't tell them we were going since it was kind of last minute. She says that she had an odd dream where she saw my uncle in a tent in a forest somewhere, and someone was outside of his tent. She says she couldn't see who it was, but she knew there was a presence there. She says she woke up around three and had the strong urge to pray for him, and she did. My uncle kind of looks at me after that, like, are you hearing this shit? I honestly don't know what to make of all of this, but I wanted to share it to hear your opinions. Some of my grandfather's stories he told me about his time working as a forester in Michigan's Manistee National Forest. He never got a chance to write any of his experiences down, so I thought I might share them with you guys here. My grandpa started working in the Manistee area in 1949, when he was 28 years old. Before then, he had been drifting around the region, doing odd jobs and logging, until he was hired by the Forest Service in the northwest part of Michigan's Lower Peninsula. The work, as I understand it, was slow and most days he and his crew were sent to different parts of the forest to address various tree and land concerns. Grandpa was always an avid outdoorsman, and he enjoyed hunting and fishing just about as much as anyone in the region. Sadly, he died in December of 1998, when I was still rather young, but I remember whenever we went to visit him and grandma, he would sit my brother and me down and tell us about his days in the forest service. Working outside every day allowed him to witness all sorts of wildlife, like black bears, white tails, foxes, and even bobcats back in those days. He often relived his encounters with bears while he was deep in the forest, telling us that those moments were some of the most memorable of his life, being up close to such beautiful and powerful animals. Usually his tales were exciting, and the enthusiasm with which he told them inspired us to go out to the backyard and look for animals in between the pines. Although there wasn't much wildlife around grandma and grandpa's property, they still always kept a close eye on us and never let us wander too far from the house. Finally, a few years before his death, Grandpa deemed my brother and me old enough to be told why. I was about 9, and my brother was about 11, when Grandpa first opened up about the strangest things that had ever happened to him. All our childhoods, we had heard him go on and on about the peace that the wilderness brought him, or used to bring him, but this time his tone was completely different. I don't remember all the details, but I asked my brother to help piece together Grandpa's story, and my dad as well, he too had heard of the experiences in question multiple times. It was the mid-50s, he never gave the exact year, and October had rolled in behind cool autumn breezes and the sound of Canada geese flying southward. The first of his strange stories occurred at night, as he was driving home from a local bar where he and his crew had spent the last few hours after work. It was a windy night, and the pines on either side of the road were blowing ferociously. No moon or stars could be seen through the thick cloud cover, so the only illumination of the road ahead came from Grandpa's headlights. By his reckoning, he must have been going close to 50 miles per hour at the very moment when something huge leapt across the road, not 20 feet ahead of him. His headlights had shown the animal's silhouette, it was dog-shaped but massive, almost stretching all the way across the road. It only made one bound to get from one side to the other, and its size alone was enough to unnerve Grandpa. At the time, he had assumed that the animal was just a very large wolf, except timber wolves hadn't been spotted in that region for decades. He considered it a bizarre encounter, but nothing came of it that night, 
and he was able to return home without anything else strange happening to him. The second of his stories admittedly frightened me enough to avoid going outside at night for years, even now I'm wary of noises in the dark because of the obvious fear in grandpa's voice when he told us of his second experience. Some details here were provided by my dad. It occurred in the same month as his first encounter, a few weeks later, on a night that was pretty cold for the season, it may have hit 40 degrees, but it was a calm night with little wind. Grandpa's house at the time was really small, and it stood in a lot with about six other similarly sized and built edifices. None of his neighbors tended to stay up very late, so it surprised him to be awakened by loud noises at about one in the morning. They sounded like scratching on sheet metal, with occasional thumps and bumps like an animal was trying to get in. Grandpa apparently got up, fetched a flashlight, put on his boots, and went out into the front room, the walls of which consisted of mosquito screens stretched between wooden frameworks. Once in the front room, Grandpa could hear the sounds more clearly, and they were coming from the nearest of his neighbor's homes, maybe 50 yards to his right. It was incredibly dark out there, with no streetlights to illuminate. The neighbor's house had a porch light on, but Grandpa couldn't make out what was creating the racket through the screen, so he slowly opened the front door and looked out. He described to us in great detail the animals that he saw there, and he always said he would remember them exactly as they were, for fear Bran's memories the strongest. Three massive dogs covered in long black hair were up against his neighbor's house, scratching at the siding and making visible claw marks with every swipe. Each beast stood about seven feet tall, with their front legs stretching for another two or three feet and easily reaching the roof and the gutter of the house. Their scratching, however, did not make it seem like they were trying to get into the house, as Grandpa explained. He thought that they were doing that to get whoever was inside out. The next part was actually the hardest to get out of Grandpa, it was strange that he was so eager to tell us everything thus far, despite how he felt about the subject, but he was rather hesitant, as I remember, to divulge the last horrifying details of his encounter. He claims that the animals then noticed that he had emerged from his own house, just across the lawn, for each one turned to look straight at him, just 50 yards away. They had pointed ears like a wolf's and huge bodies that rivaled large black bears in size. They also supported themselves not with four legs, like any other native mammal, but instead stood on two legs each, towering seven feet above the ground. The sounds that they proceeded to make, Grandpa had said, would haunt his dreams for the rest of his life. It was a shame that he could neither produce recordings nor accurately mimic the UN wolf-like screams the animals made, for that detail always fascinated me the most about his story. They didn't sound like foxes, coyotes, or bobcats, instead, they forced half screams and half howls out of their jaws that Grandpa was sure held the teeth of a carnivore. Grandpa never told us exactly what happened next, I guess we assumed that he ran inside, locked the doors, and didn't look outside until morning. He would tell us that four of his neighbors, including the elderly couple that lived in the nearest house, didn't stick around very long. He did say that he tried to talk to them about what had happened that night, but they remained evasive and never gave him any straight answers. That turned out to be somewhat ironic, because Grandpa himself kept tight-lipped about many of the details of his stories. He would say that he heard those exact screams on two other occasions, both times while he was in the Manistee Forest, and he showed us an old Forest Service report detailing a possible timberwolf sighting in the area. The thing is, Grandpa never told anyone his stories but his most trusted family, which is unique among Michigan dogman witnesses. After the craze that Steve Cook's legend song stirred in the 80s, it's no wonder that so many stories from the region surfaced. I had heard a few bits and pieces about the so-called monster before Grandpa told his tale, but it wasn't until later in life that I realized his encounters had to have been with the same creature. Whether I believe him that massive wolves walk upright through Michigan forests, well, I'm still not so sure. But as a modern zoological curiosity, the stories of strange beasts from a passionate woodsman who knew his wildlife certainly remain among the most remarkable I've heard, simply because of the genuine emotion with which he related his tales. Legends like these might just be figments of our collective imagination, so all I can do is present what I've heard and let others judge for themselves what is real and what is pure fiction. Anyway, as the song goes, don't go out at night. A couple years ago, I was on a family trip to Blackwater Falls State Park. My girlfriend and our dog decided to get a pizza and take it to one of the many picnic areas all around the park. By the time we got our pizza, it had been about an hour until it started getting dark, so instead of going to our normal spot closer to the main area of the park, we decided to pull off at one of the roadside picnic areas. The picnic area was a 50-yard semicircle cut out of the woods, with a few tables spaced out and a big tree in the middle. We chose the table under the tree and started eating. When we were close to finishing up talking about the day, I saw my girlfriend's eyes go wide. I asked her what was wrong, and she said, I hear a rattlesnake. I thought she was just being paranoid, 
but sure enough, I heard it clear as day, and it was very close by. Thinking it had to be under the table, we all jumped up on top of the table to survey the ground. I shushed my girlfriend and calmed the dog down to listen clearly, and the second it got silent, the scariest thing that has ever happened to me transpired. We heard it a crashing step, breaking wood at first, then heard the sound of greens being compressed. We took three distinct steps, followed by an abrupt stop. We all stood staring into the dense woods for what felt like forever. After what was probably only a minute at most, it started up again, this time at a slightly quicker pace. I'm no expert, but it sounded very much like something bipedal. At this time, we both noticed the trees bending in opposite directions on top of where the sound was coming from. We watched frozen in terror, waiting for what seemed like a giant to come out, but whatever it was kept walking, only stopping a few times, much shorter than the first. When we saw it was walking away from us, we took off for our car, which we sat in and could continue to see trees move until we lost line of sight. After sitting in the car for a couple minutes, an employee of the park came by, and we recounted the story. He told us it was probably just a bear, and we both accepted that and went home soon after. It wasn't until a few months later that we brought it up again. Someone asked my girlfriend what the scariest thing that has ever happened to her was, and she told that story, saying she never believed it was a bear and that we definitely were very close to something giant and unexplained. I was shocked at this because ever since it has bothered me to the core, even going as far as doing a lot of research to no avail, and I also 100% consider this the scariest thing to ever happen to me. We don't talk about it a lot because I think it still scares both of us, but I've been thinking about it a lot and thought it would be good to write it down. I know I didn't see anything in the open, but whatever I heard that day, I'm very glad to have not seen it. I can remember the days when we first got my old hound dog, which my cousin originally rescued. He passed away last August. I used to try to take him out regularly to parks or trails, etc. I can remember a specific day taking him to a nearby field where sports and other activities happen. Anyway, it was an overcast day but a mild spring-slash-summer day. We got to the road, and I drove around 600 meters and pulled off near a row of large rocks meant to keep cars from rolling. Down the hill, I got my dog out of the back driver's side and his leash, and we were off. We usually head down to the bottom of the hill, where the large field is situated, however, this day I was not satisfied with the normal route of walking at this specific spot. Instead, we crossed the road because I had noticed there was a small path created into the undergrowth. Surprised, I had never really noticed I happily led my hound, up a hill, on the opposite side of where we usually trekked. I can remember being happy that I had found a new trail or area to go on walks and how fun it would be that day. We kept getting further and further into the woods and not really staying on a particular path either, we just kind of wandered up the hill to see what we could see. I assumed just a bunch of boulders and steep hills that were hardly climbable, and that much was pretty true. On top of being kind of damp outside the day, it was difficult getting up to the top of the hill, but we were both happy when we got there and ready to turn around after around 20 minutes, give or take. We turned around because it seemed like someone's property line was coming into view, and they had recently been removing trees from their large acreage backyard. We looked at each other, and me and my hound both hurried down the hill in the opposite direction. Interestingly enough, we must have gotten turned around in some bizarre fashion, due to ending up back at the base of the hill not too long after we had just gone down it. We looked at each other in a puzzled sort of way for a moment, in disbelief that we both could be so inferior in our directional skills, but more in disbelief in what had just happened. We turned around again, even more hurriedly now, and managed to find our way to the small path I had found before, leading into the woods. Both of us started quickly out of the woods, hoping nobody had arrived while we were exploring. I got back to the car for some water and left. I was glad when I saw that path again. This is my husband's account of a glimmer man sighting that I am retelling. I just had him repeat it to me again to make sure I didn't mess up the story somehow. He grew up in Vermont, which is very wooded everywhere. Vermont feels like a pretty benign place as far as absolutely everything goes, lol, but still, where there's lots of wood, there is strangeness, and I firmly believe that. The woods are not a human domain, they belong to the animals, and God knows what else. So, about 30 years ago, when he was in high school, he and his buddies were hanging at a friend's house. The edge of the forest was probably five or six car lengths away from the porch where they were hanging. He has never smoked, drunk, or done anything mind-altering due to a medical condition. So there he was, of completely sound mind, just randomly looking at the forest edge when he saw a tall humanoid, invisible-ish figure just strolling along the edge of the forest, just inside the tree line. He watched it slowly walk the length of the property, out of sight. He said he would have never noticed it if he hadn't been looking directly at the spot where it appeared initially. 
And that was it. It was so bizarre that he didn't tell his friends and just played it off like nothing happened. The only description he could give besides the weird predator type invisibility aspect was that it was definitely humanoid shaped, sort of slowly slightly swinging its arms, and definitely tall. So crazy. Also, just FYI, my husband is a no-nonsense, practical, down-to-earth sort of man with a lot of integrity, so he is not the type to make things like this up at all. He is an open person too, though, and he has seen a number of strange things in the woods over time here in Vermont. Around 2008 to 2012, in my early 20s, I would spend many weekends after a long week at work chilling out with my best friend and my older cousin doing the typical kind of things that bored young men do after a hard week at work, listening to music, jamming together on instruments as we all played in bands, going out drinking, and smoking quite a lot of herb. We would also sometimes combine set activities with another hobby of ours, going on long walks and hanging out in the woodlands and countryside that surround our town, picking a spot and listening to music while sinking beers and smoking joints, and talking about whatever. I always considered it a blessing that a 10-minute walk in any direction out of our town would take you out to scenic views of rolling hills and woodlands for miles upon miles as far as the eye could see. We had one particular spot in a woodland that is on the edge of town. Our chosen hangout was a stroll just off the woodland track, about 5 minutes into the woods, where a bank rolled down to the edge of a stream. It was nice and secluded, so we could smoke up and drink without attracting attention to ourselves, and very peaceful, so you could hear someone coming from miles away if they were to walk the track nearby. We came here many, many times and had great hazy weekend evenings together at our little hangout, where we would often stay well into the night before heading back to the track and splitting off to our own homes once we reached the roads. One evening, this all changed, and we never went back anywhere near it getting dark again. I remember clearly that this evening, we were enjoying each other's company as usual, and while I had put a few beers away, I refrained from smoking this particular evening, I think I was coming down with a cold and didn't fancy it so I know that what happened was 100% real and not imagined or amplified in my mind from the effects of smoking. It had started to get dark, and I remember laughing as my cousin had brought a bong with him, and I let him and my best friend get on with taking hits alternately until, at one point, my cousin got a bit of a tickler, as we jokingly called it, and was coughing and honking his lungs up from taking a rather large hit. I might add that our little area we were in was very dark by this point, and we would set a few candles up on the surrounding trees and rocks to light our spot up a little. We were all positioned on a log that was at the top of the bank of the stream, with our backs to the vast expanse of woodland that continued on into the darkness behind us. My cousin is hacking his lungs up, and my best friend and I are now laughing at him, but a little concerned. Until he reassured us, he was alright, and his coughing fit subsided. As soon as a break in our conversation occurred, my cousin shot a look behind him into the woods suddenly and said, shh, very quietly while staring off behind us. I could see the concerned look on his face as he squinted and watched as my best friend Ben followed his gaze and peered in the direction my cousin Aiden was looking. All three of us are now sitting in complete silence, staring into the blackness. I whispered to Aiden, mate, are you just pranging out a bit? I can't see or hear anything, only to have my sentence cut off by a loud cracking sound in the direction we were all now facing. I know most people by now who read this are thinking it's a woodland, so sure, there are animals who are making the noises, but we all knew this ourselves and were familiar with the wildlife in this area. Something about this had a feeling to it, though, like we were being watched. It wasn't a nice feeling at all, and even the occasional sound of a bird in the trees surrounding us had stopped, leaving us in silence. Aiden stood up slowly and said to us, put the candles out, and I could see the humor from earlier in the evening had completely vanished from the look on his and Ben's faces. Ben and I got up slowly, without question, and put the candles out, leaving us submerged in almost total darkness except for the moonlight reflecting off of the water in the stream and the occasional beam breaking through the gap in the overhanging trees above us. We gathered our belongings back into our backpacks, and as we returned our view to the direction of the noise we had heard, Ben said he didn't like the feeling he was getting and that we should leave and maybe call it a night. Just as we climbed back up the bank and turned left to head out back to the track, another cracking noise cut through the night. Then another, but this time it sounded like it had come toward us a good few meters, and I could tell by this point from the volume of the sound that whatever it was was quite heavy. We are now all walking single file, looking to our right into the pitch black of the woods where the sound had come from. One of us said, what the duck is that? In a desperate but whispered tone, and my cousin snapped a branch off of a nearby tree and threw it full pelt into the direction of the sound. Big ducking mistake. Something was clearly disturbed and came at us, heavily bashing the brush and low-hanging branches in its path as it increased its speed toward us. At this point, we were all near enough to shit ourselves, and without saying a word, 
we began running as fast as possible for the exit back onto the track out of the woods, which was around 100 meters or so away, tripping and stumbling due to our poor vision in the darkness. At one point, I remember I was running, and whatever the duck this thing was was running diagonally towards us just beyond my vision to my rear right, and I could see and hear the trees and thicket being trampled by whatever it was. Then, the most terrifying thing happened, this thing made this noise that sounded like it revved up from a screech to a loud, deep roar that was deafening, causing us all to scream in terror. I remember the noise that made all of the hairs on my body stand on end, and my vision tunneled into an absolute focus on the hole in the bushes that led back to the track. My legs went into hyperspace, and I covered the remaining distance and leapt out of the hole onto the track behind Aiden and Ben, who had already turned to face me as I almost piled into them. I turned to look from where we had just come, and we all stared, gasping for breath, back into the woods. There was nothing. No sounds, and nothing emerged from the hole in the bushes. Dead silence. After a minute, we continued back to the road, looking behind us every few feet, paranoid out of our minds that whatever that thing was might reappear and come up behind us. We got to the road and stood under a streetlight. Duck me, man, what was that? Ben said, eyes wide, with a questioning look of utter horror. We all confirmed that we had no idea what the duck this thing was, and that while none of us saw it directly, it was too big to be any of the animals we knew to live in those woods, not a badger, a fox, or even a stag, but it definitely was not a person because the sound it made was unlike anything a human could produce. We had heard foxes crying and stags and deer before many a time, especially during rutting season. This was definitely not any of those, no way. We had so many questions. Why was it stalking us? Why did it charge at us when most animals would see three men all over six feet tall and decide its odds weren't really in its favor if it chose to attack for some reason? None of it made sense, but we all knew that it 100% happened and terrified us enough to feel our lives were truly threatened. We told our parents when we got home, and while many of them grew up in the same area and played in those woods as kids during the 60s and 70s, they all said the only odd thing they had ever heard of happening in there was that, as kids, they were warned not to stay in the woods after dark as the petticoat man would get them. This turned out to be a slightly fruity individual that would dress in women's clothing and flash those that came through the woods before running off. He was eventually either arrested or someone's dad kicked his head in, depending on who you asked. Ben never came back to the woods with Aiden and me again, insisting we could just hang out somewhere more open and well lit, and rightly so. Aiden and I returned to the woods one last time during the following week, around 3 p.m., and being summer, the woods were well lit by the baking sun. We spent a half hour or so playing detective but couldn't figure out what the thing had been. We found a few crushed plants where it had run towards the track, but it wasn't conclusive enough to determine that this thing had been the cause. The reason Aiden and I stopped going back at all was that during sharing a joint, Aiden looked at me, smiled, and said, don't be obvious about it, but look behind me at the edge of the wood. And there, half hidden behind a tree clearly watching us, was a man. It creeped me out a bit until I worked out that we were not small lads and this guy wouldn't stand a chance taking both of us on, especially now that we'd seen him. He just stood there, and I made deliberate eye contact with him, and he didn't move. Aiden turned to face him and said, What are you doing over there, mate? And I followed it by shouting, Oi, you ducking weirdo, we can see you. At which point he stood out from the tree, froze for a second, and then ran out of the woods. I don't think the two incidents were related in any way, but we never went back there after that.